Oops. Probably help if I put my microphone in the right spot. Yeah. Okay. That should work. Who I'm really quiet. Why am I really quiet? How about that? Better? 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 That's probably good. Okay. We'll do that. That's fine, even though it's in a weird place. Okay, there we go. Welcome back, everybody. Uh oh, that doesn't look like it's working at all. Did my CSS break? And there's a little thing flag up around the bird. That shouldn't happen. I don't really know. Well. too small. I can't actually read what it says. Chat is disabled for this live stream. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. Do I have to get a new a new chat every single time? Maybe. Maybe that is the case. Let's find out. Yep. There we go. Okay. We done did it. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm feeling better. That's good. I got my RPG Saint book. I got bills I gotta pay. We got, we got everything under the sun today. I feel like I've forgotten how to draw an Aggie. That could be the case. Maybe we just discover a new way to draw an Aggie today. I can't do that. I've already been rewriting my brain trying to, to draw or figure out how to draw or how to paint. Just paint? That's probably a problem, actually. That is probably my problem. I've been trying to do oil paints, and uh, I don't know how to make them dry. They're just always wet. Uh, yeah. A little worried about it. And it's it. going to go even slower because you live in Seattle. Um, what's the lowest you could put your oven to? I could like 190 with my air fry or my uh, dehydrator. Should I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to remember in school, sometimes we had to get oil paintings to dry rather quickly. And the advice from a professor I had was just put it on, put your oven on the lowest setting and, and put your painting in there, check on it every hour. Cook it. Pretty much cook it. Because you know, what, what you're doing is trying to, to cure the linseed oil. Okay. Okay. Which should um, polymerize at a much lower temperature than, than cooking oil. 
So, uh, it's, yeah. So, free to like your your curing cast iron skillet, but gotcha. um, with a much much lower temperature boil. Yeah, you're just trying to trying to cure something. I get that. Yeah. Could you yeah. set your oven to broil and put it on the bottom rack? That would not work. No. <laughs> uh, 550 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for any distance is 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 death for a lot of everything. Um, you shouldn't be putting like sheet pans in there at that point because it's too directed. They will warp. Zolta, hello, welcome in. And at that temperature, it'll uh, your linseed oil will ignite before it mm. will cure. That was always the funny thing. Like it's, uh, I probably, I'm sure I've done it at least once in my life, putting um, parchment paper on something and then putting it like under a broiler. Oh yeah. And it's just like, whoops, that's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Fair to so fight, the... 451 people. 451. <laughs> the silicone is uh, heat resistant, not heat proof. Yeah. But a pan in the way. I mean, that's you're still just uh, that's overkill. That's super yep. overkill. Oh. At that point, what you what you should be doing is just, if you really want to use your oven, start on the lowest temperature you can, leave the door open. Wrap it in tin foil. Like, there's a bunch of things you can do like that. But the broiler is probably just, don't use your broilers, people. You use a broiler when you need to broil something, and use a broiler safe pan. That's all I'm saying. Everything else will be on fire. Could it work? Possibly. Is it dangerous? Yes. I do have a heat gun, but like once again, that's direct heat and that's not what we want. We want passive. You yeah. need like a kiln or an annealer. Or a, I'm going to try the. I, I think the dehydrator will work just fine. I'm going to try the dehydrator. Oh, yeah, totally. Might even look up like the temperature at which linseed oil. Uh, cures which i mean is over time because it's the same thing with like yeah yeah wood wood linseed oil um trying to think because i'm i'm the stuff you use to finish wood is usually boiled linseed oil mm -hmm. so it's already got um, that stuff Ow. yeah yeah so it, it, it cures at an even lower moisture. temperature um I've never been able to figure out if oil paint is also boiled linseed oil, but I don't think it is. I think it's pure stuff. And depending on the depending on the the paint you use, it might be it might not be linseed oil. It could be walnut oil. It could yeah. be there's, there's a couple of them. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm just spitting our knowledge now to avoid having to draw because I'm floundering. God, how did I've completely forgotten what my process was. Uh, soft brush, scribble, 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 add lines later. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, Ben Harrell, welcome in. Dragon Turtle, welcome in as well. Puppet rugby is 
a thing today, apparently. <sighs> I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. All of my bones want to pop today. Ran a half a mile, walked a half a mile. Now I'm just tired. The tongue is derpy, I love it. That's what I'm going for. Just super derp. Flounder sounds delicious. I don't know if I've ever eaten flounder. Uh, I've had halibut. Had halibut. Yeah, yeah halibut's like basically the same thing. Flounder. It's just a bigger fish. Or as we call them in the industry, garbage fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are bottom feeders. Yeah. They're not bad to eat, people just don't want them. Like Pollock and Tilapia. Tastes just fine. People don't like the names. I think those are actually rebrandings because people wouldn't eat them what they were called before. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Victor, welcome in. I actually don't mind the way tilapia tastes. There's like a there's something about its texture though. Am I taking up too much space? Um no. You're I mean you're totally centered on the page, which means you've got to you, <laughs> but uh, I wasn't drawing anyway, so I can move over my page. Ah, <gasps> oh, that's what's off. Huh. I was fiddling with brush brushes, um, and my. Uh, my density was off, so I haven't been getting density variation with pressure. Ah. That's what's throwing me off. Like, I used to be able to get such my, my delicate finesse lines. No flavor to me. Uh, they are very mild fish. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have a lot mahi, of fat. Mahi, yeah. Mahi Mahi surprises me because it's an ocean fish. And it has no flavor. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it's just, it's based on what they eat, kind of, like, and, and the fat. Like, the fat is really what makes things flavorful. Otherwise, yeah. it just tastes like protein, which is why, I like, soy, not soy, uh, tofu really doesn't have a taste. Because yeah. it's just no, protein. It's like yeah. Um, might you like to make a suggestion? No, you can make a suggestion, Victor. I can put it on the list for you. To clarify, no, you are not too late. Yes, you may. Draw Jonas Rugby here. Pounder. 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 I guess that would make sense why I always like my uh, Mahi Mahi uh, breaded. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. Tofu equals death to me. Is you allergic to the soy protein? Uh, could be. Naturally occurring soy less than. Dragon turtle, if, unless you put your suggestion like in the last ten minutes, I it should be on the list. <laughs> a Drake warden female hyena with four arms. That's a that's a mouthful. We can do that. We'll put it on 
the list. Sounds like somebody wants to play Displacer Beast. Mm. It does sound like that. And also, I can't fault them for that. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, it's on the list. Play a what? Yeah, Displacer Beast. They are six legged cats that can uh, teleport short distances. And they got, got two whip front tentacles. Legs yeah, they got whip tentacles that make them hard to see and let them project images. If you ever done played Final Fantasy, it's a coral. Yeah. Which I didn't know if they stole that from D and D or if D and D stole that from something else. You know, like. Yeah. I'm not really sure that's where hard that to comes tell. from. Fantasy has cannibalized itself so many times; it's really hard to tell sometimes. Yeah, that's true. What comes from where? I mean, or it could just have a shared ancestry right that's like, what i'm saying like that's that's the thing i don't know where it's, where it's from from the greeks or the romans who stole everything the party blink dog can fault them for that maybe catfish is the best fish i have not had catfish either mm. it's like catfish is very fatty yeah uh, it's pretty good as long as the person who prepared who prepared it managed to get the mud layer out, I yeah. That's like saying um, deer meat tastes bad unless you remember to remove the butt. Or <laughs> always flesh out your clam. <laughs> flesh it, or like remember to peel your uh, or peel your your gooey duck. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why does this taste like rubber? It's still got the skin on it. A lot of fantasy creatures from Europe, Native Americans, and Asian folklore. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah I think catfish you just have to clean. Like, just, you have to clean it especially. But, I mean, like, again, that's the, it's the same thing for every yeah. sort of yeah. bottom feeder. That was my, that was where I was getting at. It's just like... Yeah, I used to love tilapia, but my doctor's like, no, 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 no. Really? Why? Apparently, they have a larger than normal amount of heavy metals in their blood. Interesting. Uh, that's, that's probably because they're farm-raised. Uh. Yeah. Even over like tuna or salmon? Uh, tuna tuna is actually on my you shouldn't eat list. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. For the same reason? I would assume for the same reason, yeah. Yeah. Little tiny fish eat the garbage. Little bigger fish eat lots and lots of little fish equal lots of garbage. Big fish yeah. eat lots and lots of medium fish equal lots and lots and lots of garbage. And that's how we get mercury poisoning. <laughs> right? Yep. It's a sad day. It's... Also plastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, microplastic. Tasty, tasty. Cod liver oil has some warnings from men over 55. Huh. Yeah, garbage. Yep. All right, I think I'm ready to start drawing stuff. Let's see what we got today. Welcome in, by the way. <clears throat> For everyone who doesn't know how this works, uh, if you've not suggested something, you're very welcome to suggest something, and I can put it on the list now. If you put it on the viewer suggested list on Monday, um, on the community post, I have it. I have it on the list. I'm going to roll a die. We're going to see what it does, and then we're going to draw whatever the die says. Uh, it is April, so we are doing 
more super chats whenever people do super chats uh i'm gonna draw a baby something <laughs> so you have you can give me a give me a monster uh, monster or animal pokemon i don't care <laughs> just <laughs> whatever it is Pokemon. be very be very generalized because i'm not doing super specific stuff this week um yeah you only get one suggestion per week and uh yeah so that's what the super chat april eighth april birthdays is because we are waiting for the child to be born so we'll see how that goes and then i probably won't be around for the rest of the month so eh, take it as you leave it here we go moment of five skeleton made of many different animals and humans all right creepy right Uh, should we put up the color? Put up the color. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I am, yeah. Well, I'm not. But there will be a baby. <clears throat> now I'm working on like uh, college funds. <laughs> mm. You mean I have to invest in the future? Yeah. While also paying off your college experience? Oh, yeah. No, that's the stupidest part. <gasps> There have been quite the expansion in programs, though, for helping that. It's. I don't want to talk about it, to be honest. <laughs> it's still a lot of work yeah. to try and get through it, though. It's not a. It's not a good. Uh, a good. Live stream topic. I shouldn't have brought it up. No. But that is that is what my life is going to be like for the next little while. Worrying about finances and. Racing. Congratulations, racing the baby. Thank you. You're you're now old. Oh, I've been old for a while, so that's fine. <laughs> I'm prepared for that part. Some of us have been old since we were twelve years old. True. Everybody ages different. So a minimalist bone devil, made by Picasso. Yeah, that sounds about right. Just draw a mercury. I don't know what that is. I always hate it when people tell me to draw something that I've, like, never read before. Like, I don't know the name. Because then it's like, am I being punked? McCready? Is that Mercaddy? I think that might be Pathfinder thing. Mercaddy, these nuts. This is what I always feel like is coming, so I, <laughs> I always panic a little bit. It, it always comes back to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, McCready, Archives of Nethys. Three-handed centipede monsters? No. All right. Centipede hydras? That's pretty weird. Three-headed predators with devastating aware array of breath weapons. So, less hydra, more Cerberus. Elliot, hello, hello. Puts this into a diaper fund. I can do that. A thunderbird hatchling? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. Um, oh, the baby birds are so nasty looking. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I will divert. I will divert for the super chats. So, hold on a second. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of eggs. Diapers are so expensive. Yep. So I got the Costco. I got the Costco membership. Yeah. People kept telling me like, "Oh, Washington's got a got a pretty good like cloth diaper service where you just they just drop it off and pick it back up." And I'm like, "That's kind of cool. I'm not spending money on that." <laughs> yeah, I refuse to pay money for things. Yeah, depending on your location. Yeah, I live in a pretty good location for that kind of stuff, so it might yeah. be something we do later. But 
<clears throat> there, there will reach a time that you just don't have enough time. Yeah, maybe. It's very possible. What do Thunderbirds look like? Uh. Uh, what type of Thunderbird are you talking about? Well, yeah, therein lies the problem. Tails. Like I guess yeah I guess Quetzalcoatls are thunderbirds aren't they? Yeah. I decided against Manticore and D and D Salamander. Those are both good. Please select your wise old man stereotype a two M body. Oh I've already done that Dragon Turtle. I'm one hundred percent, um. Like the weird thrifty old man. I'm not really sure how. Like I've I've started fixing all of my own cars, <laughs> and I'm building a I'm building a, a leather belt right now because I can. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have always been the hey kids get off my lawn. <laughs> Go wash your hands, you brats. I have I have horrible news. <laughs> I've been uh, complaining about the rabbits that have been living in my yard. Uh huh. And uh, the other day, I was working on the video, and I heard like a beep, 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 whack, and like a really loud thud. And I walked outside, and there's a neighbor cat just holding one of the little rabbits in its mouth, and it looks at me, and then just runs down the street. And I was like, "Well, that bunny's gone." <laughs> so, well, <laughs> there now, there's now one bunny in my yard. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, I don't know if I should feel bad because it took my bunny, or if I should be mad because. That damn cat stole my rabbit. So. It's like, I was kind of mad and not happy about it being there, but now now I'm, I'm kind of upset that it's not there anymore. So. If anyone should be mad, it's Pixel. He never got a chance to play with it. Yeah. Oh, he tried. He's just real dumb. <laughs> he did kill the last one, so. But yeah. It just kind of is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. Things come and things go. Yep. I saw the same same note. I saw a gang of um, crows, like four or five of them, mm -hmm. and they were just like they were just like grease lightning, walking up to this like pack of uh, of sparrows. <laughs> they were like, like this is our stuff." And the crows were like, "Oh yeah," and just like <laughs> walking around. I'm like, Burr. I was like, "This is this, this. my neighborhood is." Nuts. Nature is weird. I do have a character. If you can spare another one for the list, but how big is it today? It's pretty big. It's a big list today, and uh, I there's a very very small chance <laughs> I will be doing a Friday stream. Um, I mean, eh, I say that there's a there's probably a better chance that I will be doing a Friday stream. But I don't want to get people's hopes up, so I'm just going to kind of not anticipate doing one. And if you guys, if there is a Friday stream, it will be good for everybody. So, If there's not, I will probably hang out in uh, in the Discord. Okay. And draw stuff. So, I don't know, maybe maybe after the stream is done, I'll take whatever's left of the list. I can, I can give you access to it if you want. Okay. I don't know. Well, we shall, I suppose, see what happens. Yep. Oh, yeah. Having guest uh, artists would be awesome on the channel. It would be. Yeah, it would be awesome. I mean, at this point, Druid hey, is essentially just one of the artists. So. Pretty much. I was actually going to talk to you about that, but maybe I'll do that after stream. About, um... I kind of want to start, like, not just me doing commissions but like a commission studio i think that would be kind of neat but there's a whole bunch of logistics and stuff i gotta figure out for that yeah, yeah. It, it would most likely just be like a website where people can go to commission artists but which would be very cool but that would be a nice way to get people access and like checking out other people's artists and get people's portfolios and stuff set up so yeah Alright, I think I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs>
I would, yeah, I'd like to see you get Optibu in here because I am super digging their stuff right now. No idea if they'd feel comfortable drawing in stream though. Yep, never asked. Oh, uh, yeah. Optibu, if you're out there, I love everything you've done lately. Super impressive. Add a little more lightning. Yeah, I like their stuff. This is a lot. I forgot about Critbit. Critbit is someone I think that I met on uh, r slash character drawing. And they just posted a bunch of stuff on Instagram. And I was like, oh, damn. So good. Maybe I should invite them on too. All right, little lightning bird. Brap. <laughs> Make it familiar at some point. Nice. My uh, Instagram feed. And TikTok are just like full of birds, like bird content. And I don't know why that is. Interesting. Birds and derpy cats. That's about all I see anymore. All right, back to the horror skeleton. <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting... Actually, I haven't I haven't posted anything to my Instagram for a while, which is unfortunate. Same. Uh, I've been working on so many different commissions for, like, publications that I felt, felt weird posting their stuff, you know? Yep, yep. But I just got the okay for me to share all that stuff, which is why I did the stream yesterday, the secret stream. Um... Because they're like, yeah, you can you can live stream all that stuff and share it with anybody now. I'm like, cool. So probably a whole bunch more stuff to share here in the future. Other than that, the only like social media thing that I do, I've toyed with doing a, a blue sky but again I'm, i've been like i haven't been producing art so there's what's been little sky? point uh it's the twitter replacement ah it's uh less well i shouldn't say less i should say more tame version of uh the, the website formerly known as twitter gotcha What's your opinion on raising familiars instead of summoning them? Like, instead of making one magically, you're given an egg from your patron and told to raise it as part of your pact. Um, so, I like the idea. The downside to it, especially with, like, um, the, like the Drake Warden. I think that works really well for the Drake Warden. Mm -hmm. um, the downside to it is it makes the pets more fragile. I'm gonna yep. say, so That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, so so essentially, like if you do that, and the pet dies, like, do you have to use a revivify revivify spell on the pet, um, or is there a means within your class to revive it versus just getting a new one? So in older editions, that's very much how it was. Like you had to go into the forest and like a familiar, you would find one and train it. And then they would get training points, and they'd have their own XP, and so it was, it was a little more interesting, but it took a lot more time. Um, but in that aspect, I really like it. Like it was, it was a lot of fun having somebody train a bear, right? Like in their downtime, they're like, "I would like to try to teach it a new skill," and we're like, "Great, yep, you're gonna spend eight hours trying to teach this creature how to do attack," you know, like because because five E kind of eschews a lot of that. Yeah. Um, or foregoes it by simply saying that 
once it's your pet, you summon it, it knows all the skills you want to teach it. Um, oh, Blue Sky's aimed at artists specifically? I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, you used to get four tricks, which would be like ride, fetch, attack, or uh, like pick up. And those four actions you did not have to roll for. You didn't have to roll an animal handling check for. But literally anything else you wanted your pet to do, or your, your mount or your uh, or your companion to do, you had to roll for. Like, that's what animal handling was for. Uh, and I kind of miss that. I kind of like that. Because it was fun to, like, to have people do that and train their train their pets. So I like that aspect of it. I think that's a fun way to, to do it. But uh, it is what it is. I need to raise my computer about four more inches. Why do I need, like, do I have a book or something I can cram under this? I guess I could just steal those studs. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I don't know, I'll do it later. I don't want to do it later. It's giving me a neck ache. I want to do it right now. I'm going to go look for a board. Hold on a second. <laughs> Why am I being like, spare do phone books or just anything? do the work. Yes. Lewis's Gene X and Genetics, a conceptual approach. What better things to cram underneath a tablet? <laughs> Let's see if I can do this without knocking anything over. Oh, goodness. Oh, it's heavy. Why did I buy the big one? Because I'm spoiled. That's why. And the big one's awesome. Okay. Because you were making that. that Sweet, sweet YouTube money. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. Right. I did the last year when I did the, uh, I did that book deal where I did the how to draw book. Uh huh. Um, all of that money went into the tablet. That's what I bought. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, big, big, uh, big paycheck. Upgrade all of the equipment. Not, not been sad about that yet. Extra and write it off on tax. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the sales tax back, yeah. <laughs> you guys think I make enough money to pay taxes? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know Washington State all too well. I I assume you make enough money that you still have to to prepare taxes. Yes, I make enough money that I have to actually. I do have to file and uh, and and pay taxes, <laughs> but like. Yeah, you you have to make an absurdly low amount of money. Yeah. To uh, not have to do your taxes. Taxes? What are those for? They're for roads. That's what roads. Are. That's how you get roads. Well, that's what they, that's what they're supposed to be for. <laughs> uh, I uh, yeah. Can you have multiple familiars? Teach them to fight. Keep them in special bags of holding. Yes. Yes, you can, Dragon Turtle. Um, there's a whole setting set up for that. I can't remember what it's called. It's like, I'm not being, I'm not being coy. Like, I think it is called like pocket battles or something. There's also the Pokemon <clears throat> RPG. <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about, but I can't remember what it's called. Someone made a 5e module based off of Pokemon. And I cannot for the life of me of remember what it's yeah. called. Pet battles definitely makes me wonder why people want to create their own fight club. What do you mean? Of little monsters. Oh, I mean, why do people want brothels? Why do people want to be bank robbers? I don't know. They just do. Like it's, it's just, sure. <laughs> it's just, it seems to be part of human nature is to want to play the villain. I'm struggling. It's, I'm struggling with the skeleton yeah. monster. It's about control. Generally, it's about control. Oh, it's a power fantasy. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I could see that. Oh, no. 
Oh no. Two books is too many. Hold on. Uh oh. I need I need I one. Just needed two thinner books. Oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take them off. I'm not gonna stack them. I'm gonna put them next to each other. Come on. Okay, my waiter training has prevailed. I'm holding up like a 20 pound tablet with one hand on a board. Boom. Okay. That's much better. Oh yeah, I like that. That's good. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe we just do a shape. Let's start with a shape. This is essentially like an ice or a bone devil. I guess the ice devils are bugs, right? Yeah. Ice devils are really weird. You think bugs would not handle cold well? Or you I mean, would think that. Sorry, go ahead. It, it really does depend. There, there is a species of beetle native to, uh, I believe it's Antarctica, that. Um, it's not blood. What's the not mucilage? What's the what's the it's ichor? bug equivalent? Yeah, their oh. their their ichor is a uh, is so antifreeze that they they literally freeze solid uh, for half of the year, and then thaw completely fine. What the hell is that called? It's not ferrofluid. That's metal. Yep. Um, uh, it means inside vitreous hemolymph. Hemolymph. There we go. I had to. They're look blood juice. Chewie <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> could put on a video of why you should play moth folk. Good. I could. I could Pretty outsource much. the art for for a video. That could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let Corvus write the uh, the moth folk lore and then have you draw it. <laughs> yeah. Why you want to play him as mom? I can just retire. I can just retire and start writing. Maybe I just become the writer, which would make me sad, but, you know, I've had weirder twists. I mean, you could have had us do that for uh, for a um, the April Fool's yeah. video. That would have been funny. I didn't, I didn't put out an April yes. video this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Why? I'm Rook Zero. <laughs> right. Why you should play horses? You shouldn't. No. <laughs> That's what I should attempt for the YouTube short. <laughs> Why you should play 5e? Don't! It sucks. It sucks. It sucks and I hate it and everyone should go away. Just kidding. I hate I hate pranks. <laughs> I, just, I just hate everything about them. I'm such a wet blanket. That's the kind of old man I'm going to be. I'm just going to be an old blanket. Words have meaning. Yeah. I was watching. Uh, I was watching Conan O'Brien. The like Conan O'Brien clip. <laughs> and and uh, he was. Who was he talking to? I don't remember who she was, but he was talking to somebody. And he was like, "Oh yeah." When we were doing this, and she's like, "No, we didn't do that." And he's like, "Great, great imp uh, improv, such a good, <laughs> such a good way to improv <laughs> for me." Hey, Conan. Yeah, let's go to get ice cream. No, That's awesome. Thanks. So, why you should play a human? I did that two years ago. <laughs> Dragon Turtle. <laughs> That's what the why you should play a human video is. It's an April Fuel Fool's video. Um, I still like that video. The artwork's good too. So, it's not bad and. Yeah. My fa like my favorite thing about it was that it was, it was like it was obviously done for April Fools, but it was still a good like it was yeah. still a legit video. And it's because I it's because I hate pranks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. One year, one year when I was a kid, I um, I went to this is a good one. I went to the sink, and we have one of those little like spray nozzles, mm -hmm. like one of these little things that's just like sitting on the, the spigot. 
and I rubber banded the handle down. And I'm like, this is going to be hilarious. A week passes by and nobody uses that sink until I walk up to it and blast myself in the face <laughs> <laughs> with, <laughs> with the, uh, the hose. So, yeah. Womp womp. <laughs> Corvus, hello, I'm Rook Zero Druid, and, and I'm Rook Two. Together, we are the Tower Bros. <laughs> 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 Why tower pros? Of <laughs> we are the Shiteno, or what? Wait, what's the joke about the? You have to fight the four different ninjas in the tower. I was thinking. I thought you were trying to make a uh, Scott Pilgrim joke. You have to fight uh, all the old boyfriends. The evil exes. Yeah, evil exes. That, there we go. That might be it. I mean, it's just it's just it's anime, thing. right? Like it's anime yeah. 101. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like the four pillars of the tower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't get the tower reference. What is that? What are we talking about? Um. I. I think it all comes back to the old well i'm sure it predates it but i don't know how it predates it but i think it all comes back to the old idea of those uh jrpg uh battle towers where you have different masters in them yeah you go up a few floors and you battle oh uh, okay you go up a few floors battle another one gotcha 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 yeah those are fine so like, yeah Oh, yeah, yeah it's it's kind of a video game trope i guess but like i've also seen it in some of the like trashy chinese historical dramas that i watch because mm -hmm. uh because i do um and it's it's kind of like it's a kind of an eastern martial art trope thing where where um i'm i'm assuming it shows up mostly in uh, in literature, mm. uh, but like in a in a population center, if there's a if there's a school of martial arts, they're usually and and they're wealthy enough, they usually have some sort of tower that they occupy and gotcha. Okay. And challenging the tower, I guess, means that you challenge each of the students of that school. Yeah, yeah, and okay. it's or or each of the masters, and it's it it's part of a, a challenge to prove your worth as a uh, as a martial artist gotcha. and it shows up often in, in anime and video games uh about martial arts hmm. anyway. no, i know i thought it's, it sounds like a like you know a boss fight in a dungeon dive but pretty much yeah i've never heard of referred to as a tower it's like a pokemon gym yeah it sounds like a pokemon gym Pretty, yeah. Pretty Rook much. is the tower piece in the chess. Yeah. Oh, okay. The tower boys. Gotcha. Trying to make fun of dungeon dudes. The tournament arc? Okay, yeah. Tournament arc is, is more... That sounds more familiar to me. The tower part is the thing I was most confused about. The Rookery Burrows. My name was originally supposed to be based more around the chess piece anyhow, so... That could work. my old battle tag used to be this. Was it, wait, was it O around, I think it was the O around the outside. If you've ever played Battlefield and you get stomped by someone that looks like this, that's me. That was me, I killed you. <laughs> I took your, I took your, your, your name tag. Was you? I was the one that sniped your helicopter with that rocket launcher. I did that. You can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason why I have this stratagem on my helmet.
I still want to do a Pokemon run where I get nothing but uh, Rook. What are they called? Shoot. Can't remember what they're called. Murkrow? What's the uh, deal leveled version of those called? Haunch Crows? Mm, nope. It's in the newer newer one. Newer one? Oh, Corviknight. I think Corviknight levels from uh Rookity? Rookity, yeah. Rookities. Yep. I wanna do an all rookity run. Let's just see what happens. That would require me to uh own the game though so yeah <laughs> probably won't buy the latest pokemon game yeah. that's not happening i mean you might as well buy one of the pokemon games that's 30 years old they're basically the same yeah i mean no the ones, the ones the that are 30 are... years old are or cost way more i have all the old ones <laughs> i almost bought the new one when it came out sword and shield i think was the last one i almost bought mm -hmm. i think there might be one more out since then like pearl and something else but, uh, I just didn't. I just didn't. I think I bought Breath of the Wild and whatever the new one is. Cheers of the Kingdom. And my eyeball exploded, so I just played that. That was freaking Korok seeds, man. Mm-hmm. I got a good chunk of them. <laughs> Jump Rope had this this bender for um we had an argument about this <laughs> there's two ways to play legend of zelda and uh in my mind and one of them is knowing what the four um this is based off of breath of the wild like this so this this kind of goes for i'm just gonna use four basically knowing the four things you have to do to complete the game right so you could go boop mm -hmm. boop 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 and then beat the end boss. The game's done. You can do that in like, I'd say, I'd say like twenty hours is a good, a good run for that. If that's what you're trying to do, like just collecting the things that are important. And then, cat, you can't be up here. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. 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 <clears throat> um, because there's also just like with those games specifically, it's just like I'm gonna go to the end boss. You beat the game in twenty minutes. Great. Um, mm -hmm. but then. There's the other way to do it, which I think is kind of the more classic old school, uh, old school way to do it, which is find out where the dungeons are, and then literally fuck off and do everything else until you feel like you're powerful enough that you can just stomp the bosses and then go to them. And go, <laughs> right? And so Jump Rope wanted to do that. Jump yep. Rope's like going from here to 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 here just like just yep. doing all this stuff. And I'm like, can we please go get one of the bosses beat so that we have their ability? Because we're like, we're dragging our feet and it's taking us forever to walk over these mountains. But if we go get the stupid bird, like we can fly. Can we please go get the bird? And she was just like... <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, we're missing out on half of the game because we don't have the abilities of the bosses. So I'm mm -hmm. with the new way of the Zelda things. I like going to the four bosses and then fucking off and like exploring the world, um, mm -hmm. and then going to fight the main boss whenever you're like, all right, I think I'm done with this game. We'll go do that. So that's what we did. We we explored almost all of the underground before we beat the first boss, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, I wish we would have had. To win for all of this, um, and like we got all the tiers, and that game is weird if you do that first. If you do all the tiers first, because <laughs> you're just like, well, I have all the story now, and I have no idea what's actually going on in the world, so that's weird. But Scarlet and Violet are the most recent mainline games. Legends of Arceus is the most significant spinoff. Okay, gotcha. That reminds me of the last time that I played a uh, Zelda game was uh, Cadence of Hyrule. Oh, yeah. And I did that. That was I a... I did everything. That was a spinoff of uh, uh, Necro Dungeon, right? Necro Dancer? Yeah. That was a Necro Dancer game with Zelda. Ex Zelda expansion. I didn't actually... I didn't finish that one, because I, I played a little bit of it at my friend's house, and then I didn't, I didn't go back to it. 
I'm ready to roll. Okay. Why don't you roll, and then I'm going to take a really quick break and get a little more water. So. Okay. Is it, what, two d20s? Uh, yeah. No, just roll a d20. We'll go from there. Thirteen. Uh, wrestling burly barbarian brawler dude. Oh, wear tiger. I said wrestling. Wear tiger. Wear tiger. Okay. Wear tiger barbarian. Okay. Yeah. Be right back. Hang tight. There are so many Zelda randomizers for all the different games. Yeah. Which really does not surprise me. Mm hmm. I would have to agree. Also, I find it kind of funny that uh, we were just talking about Pokemon and now I am uh, apparently going to draw Incineroar. Okay. I gotta be careful, I'm in bear territory. Cat face shape, cat face shape, hexagon. Skip Cat just wanted to steal my chair. <laughs> Keeping it warm uh, for you. I got a good new chair. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> I highly recommend Legend of Arceus if you want a good and significantly different play experience. Yeah, because that one was more... That one was different. It's like an Isekai Pokemon game. That was fun to watch. It was fun to watch people play. Alright, we're supposed to have some different animal 
bones in here. I think we might give it some like deer antlers and stuff. That could be kind of cool. Bruce Lee's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee's always a good option. You good, Scoop Cat? Hmm? We should give it like a dinosaur hand for <laughs> dinosaur head for a hand. Jaws complicated. Skulls pretty nice. Very simple. Well, once once you figured out how to draw skulls, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. If you want to draw people, like, learn how to draw skeletons. That's the trick. Yep. If you want to learn That's how to draw dogs, of... draw dog skeletons. Like. Yeah, yeah. It's really the trick for any for any biological creature. Especially if you want to do something that's, that's kind of more realistic, like mm -hmm. really representational. I think that's part of my problem with bugs. It's like... <laughs> they're, they're, well, no, I mean, like... The, <laughs> it's supposed no, to be a joke. I, I get it. I get it. Sorry. Like, bugs yeah. are, are, because they have exoskeletons, the joints and stuff work a little different. Like, they just, yeah. they act yeah. different. Yeah. So, They're kind of funky. Getting a predator vibe. That's my problem with bugs. They wear their bones in, uh, on the outside. <laughs> the bones are backwards. <laughs> Some of these Bengal tiger references have just the biggest mutton chops. They don't really have manes, but they got yeah. the face poof. Yeah. The primordial uh, cheeks, is that what they're called? So There's you have you have normal cat, features. right? You have normal cat. Yep, yep. And then if you have uh, big boy adult cat, they get the primordial pouch, which is like the floppy tummy. Yep. And that's so that they don't get damage to internal organs when they fight other cats. Uh, they also, if you don't spay or neuter your cats, get the big old fat cheeks. Get the big old poof cheeks. And that's when you see like those big old just floof tongue cats. Same purpose. Same purpose. Protects their faces from being bitten by other cats. It's like, it's like cat 
battle armor, <laughs> but made out of fat. I'm not sure if the previous comment was for 2D or 3D art. Oh, can I get... Yep, yep, yep. I forgot to turn off the ad. Sorry about that. Boop. Thank you for sponsoring this uh, episode. Wait, did I turn that off or turn it up? <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, you dirty capitalist. Somebody manually. pays you to turn there off the go. ads so you turn on more ads. <laughs> <laughs> See how that goes. Optic girl, who I was able to see alive for a bit. Yeah, welcome in. Yeah. Trude was asking if you were going to draw with us ever earlier in, yeah. the, in the stream. No pressure if you don't want to. But if you want to draw with us, you're welcome to. On Druid's request. Yeah. I also said I love everything you've been doing this week. Or not just this week. Everything you've posted in the Discord lately. I guess I have to preface that with, if you're over 18 and you are okay with your stuff being on the internet, you're allowed to go draw with us. <laughs> I don't know. Sign the, uh, sign the release form. I own everything. That's not true. <laughs> I don't own jack shit that Druid does. But I have the right to repost my videos. So. Yep. That's the only stipulation I put on it. If you draw on a live stream, I might. Use the video itself, but the artwork is yours. All right, I think I'm done drawing whatever creepy horror show this is. <laughs> Sack of bones. Yeah. That's very cool. I would love to do art prompts or trades in the future. Sounds fun, but I don't draw well live. Fair. Yeah, that's prime. That's totally fine. Yeah. <sighs> no pressure. This we is were just talking about a guest artists. Skill. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about guest artists coming on, and I was like, we don't have to look very far in order to, to run into some really, really talented people. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I think I'm done with this one. I'll move on to the next one. Even though this isn't bones. It's bones enough. I have decided. Two! A homeless wizard down on his luck. No, uh... <laughs> no ancestry feats. Just, mm. just homeless. I was born homeless and I'll die homeless. The world is my home. Now, uh, what color are we going for? Purple? A uh, street urchin. Where does the term urchin come from? Like, is it based off of the the spiny thing? Or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. Yeah, I think it's the other way around. Urchin was a, a poor person first, and then a wandering mollusk later. Uh, is it a bone or no bones day? Uh, I hope it's a bones day. <laughs> no bones day sounds sounds bad. Uh, similar to what you say about skeletons, I've heard that people say that you should draw characters naked and add clothes armor later. Is that how it works for 2D and 3D? For 3D, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. with 3D, it's you need to understand 
the you need to understand the bones so it's a lot easier to like rough out the shape of the body and then create the clothes as separate objects after the fact and then rig them separately that being said once you do that you can actually go back in and erase a lot of the the skin so like you don't put a lot of detail into like the under layerment but you need to know what's there and how it, how it interacts so for 2d um i think it's really smart especially like to do with figure drawings i'll do a quick Thing. like when they say draw the body first like that can be as simple as just knowing like the blocking of your character yep um and i even i even go down like for the hips and stuff i usually go to bones for the shoulders i do a little more um i just draw the muscle clusters because they kind of wrap a little different but so the more you know about the underneath of your character the kind of the better off you're going to be and then you can go back in and like draw the drapery on top of that. And then you just don't add the detail. So it, it's kind of an iterative process of going from drawing your characters like bones, the shape, the jet. So I would actually start gesture, bones, structure, skin, clothes on top. And then you kind of do a final drawing on top of all of that at the end. So better to be homeless than boneless. <laughs> I would agree with that. I would agree with yep. that. Yep. I do enjoy my bones. So we got the purple. We're going to draw purple for this one. I'll start with a new pole. Uh, urchin from Middle English. Urchin. Urchin. Hedgehog. hedgehog or yeah. sea urchin from old. So, yeah. So it was the animal first, and then it was the and then it was person. Hmm. Noun, plural, one, a, mysteria, or a mischievous child. Two, a street urchin, a child who lives or spends most of the time in the street. Three, a sea urchin, one, a pair of a series of small card cylinder card cylinders arranged around a card drum. So called for its franchise resembling to a... Or hmm. Fancy resemblance yeah. to a hedgehog. Queer mm. bribed four children in the 1700s who slept in heaps on the street, similar to rodents. Okay. None of those things sound related. Whatever. Nope. I'm making sure it wasn't BS or something. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should there be a mechanics or perk tied to financial status? I mean, there's a whole class for nobles. So, yeah. <laughs> Whether you want it to be like a, a, a class system, like, you can do that. That's pretty easy. But, like, yeah. mechanically, all I would do with it is, like, better prices at shops and or higher reputation. Maybe, like, uh, basically, it would be the same as, like, having a really good disguise check to, like, look like a royalty person, right? Like, that's that's an example of a mechanic being used in that way. So, yeah. uh, if higher if or lower diplomacy. IRL, yeah, yeah, if you're talking about IRL, I think my answer would be no, that shouldn't be the way it works. But well, that shouldn't be. Yeah, I was going to say, that shouldn't be what it is. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Politically, same answer. Put on some sweatpants and try to go buy a Ferrari. See what happens. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, nowadays, depending on where you go, that might be the thing. Yeah. yeah. Which I hate everything about it. Why? But... Why are you pooping all over my my anecdote? Huh? Come on. <laughs> and yes. Yes, and me. Yes, and me. <laughs> Get out. No, I'm kidding. That's <laughs> fine. No, I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. How many how many uh, tech bros have just gone in in biker shorts? Oh, hate it. I'm gonna buy a whole company. It's like, why does your hair look like that? <laughs> uh, should there be a mechanic? Oh yeah, I read that. Good drawings are like good drawings are like ogres. They have layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. What class is for noble? No, noble is the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. It's if, part of the a, part of the NPC yeah. class system. If you're talking about player classes, it's Bard. I don't want to do a side profile.
So that's got to be a giant umbrella. You say that coming from California? No one says you have to be rich to be a sorcerer. Uh, I'm confused. Cosmic. I'm very confused. I don't get the joke. My friends that lived in California um, like to use the term monopoly money when they refer to, to, to anything they do in California. I have some I have some terse words for Costco. I think Costco is kind of a scam, but Yeah, I mean lots of people don't really know a lot of uh, the background history of Costco. Yeah. Are you and including how me in that or big they are. Oh yeah, yeah. I have been practicing on and off with lines. Everything goes out the window once I try to add detail. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> I still struggle with that, for sure. Like, that's part of the thing with, um, like, with this, is I would say there's probably five five layers I usually do. Gesture, uh, structure, detail, and then, like, cleanup, and then a final layer. Cleanup is actually, when I say clean up, I'm still cleaning up the structure and the gesture and the detail. Um, and that's just how it works. And then the final one is just, this would be like the clean layers. Clean lines. So like, yeah, I don't actually get to like my final, final lines until like the fifth, fifth iteration of it. Now, a lot of the times these can kind of go in real fast. And sometimes yeah. I'll notice that like, I will start doing detail too early and it screws me up because I'll, like, I'll put a way ton of detail on a face and then like the body's just jacked up. So it's like, these are my, these are kind of my go-to how to do art. Um, and it's time, it's just time. Like a lot of the times I would say a lot of people get stuck here and they try to go from here to clean. And that's when they feel like, oh, my proportions are shit. And it's like, well, you, you skipped the detail and the cleanup step. <laughs> so you only have like a, you basically have a gesture sketch, which are not going to be proportionally correct. They just aren't. They n yeah, yeah, never, never. They're just, they're just there to capture flow and emotion. And a lot of artists like use that to get some really, really cool proportionality, but it's because they know how to clean it up. They know how to clean it up and make it look good and stylized. Yeah. And a lot of artists really don't know how to do that. So like if you, if you find yourself struggling um after that especially trying to keep uh all of that cool looking emotion or like yeah motion and line uh that that is a constant struggle everybody everybody struggles to like there there is a, a forever old artist meme about like the the initial sketch looks amazing and alive uh and then you go back and clean it up and it looks dead and stupid uh yep. it's the same so, uh, thing yeah. with uh there's i think the new version of that meme is like 10 hour painting five yeah. likes 10 minute sketch three thousand yep. likes <laughs> just yep. like why it's like well because that original sketch has a lot more feeling and like it grabs people the final yeah. product just is uh leaves nothing to the imagination. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's part of, it's it's like the commercialization of things, you know. Like, yeah. So it's why do people want it, ripped up denim when they could have a very a fancy well made pair of pants? Yeah. Why do why yeah. do they pay know. for people to rip up their denim? Yeah. Because it just they just like it. They just like it. Or the pre-worn denim. Mm -hmm. Ugh. 
If you want pre worn denim, go to a freaking Goodwill. Rift. Do not spend yeah, $4,000. Who spends $4,000? Like, is that a company that's only selling to Kanye West? Like, uh... Unfortunately, no. So, like, I. <laughs> I, I watch a lot of YouTube shorts from from uh, the, the channel is called Refashioned Hippie. Okay. Um, and it's a it's a woman and she does um, uh, like clothing reclamation. She's very uh, like she uses her channel to promote small businesses and tear down really big businesses. Gotcha. Um, and and there have been some some like designer brand name stuff that is marketed specifically as like pre-worn pre-shredded uh, a lot of it is denim and and it's absolutely horrible because it's uh, like it's homeless chic yeah. like they're they're literally selling people who have too much money um clothes that look like that look like stuff that homeless people have to wear mm -hmm. um and they are they are literally charging thousands sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars for this yeah garbage. okay i gotcha that's no good let me catch up on chat real quick yeah um there's a running theme that sorcerers are the trust fund kids of casters some take it literally yeah i, I think you can do it because yeah. i mean if you have a very powerful wizard that's like would have kids like if they are a powerful wizard they're probably pretty well off like magic just inherently makes you not die um yeah. so like i think that's and that is and that is one way to get a sorcerer's bloodline yeah sorcerers probably have a pretty long lineage of wealth uh how do you keep arms proportional when they aren't lined up with the torso i can help you with that you would probably can't too so this goes back to the structure stage like your gesture is going to look something like like this and you're just like yeah mm -hmm. um like how do you how do you figure this out? Well, so once you start breaking down your character like into a box, you get the ribs in here. I'll just do this real quick. You're gonna look at where those connect, and your arms can stay relatively the same length. Like you can you can do that, and then if you want to start like pushing the uh, foreshortening of things, you just have to look at the perspective of your of your character. So. Like, if we have here, this is a box. I'm going to really make this look boxy so I can get the point across that I want to do. Um, you can kind of see where this box would be. And you can start playing with... Uh, that's actually a bad pose because they are they are straight. <laughs> Sorry, bad example. Um, but yeah, break them up. Break them up into boxes. Break them up into boxes, and then you can start playing with this one, like you see, would bend here. And we can look at it as being the same length if you want it straight. But because it might bend towards the camera, like you'd have this this oval where it would be doing that, you can start looking at it in this kind of perspective. And this character's far enough away that like the perspective isn't really going to give you too much um, too much foreshortening. Like the hand's gonna be a little bit bigger. But you can see, like, you can see where the arm is right here. If we make it a box, it's not that much. Like, there's there's almost none. So you can make them pretty pretty similar. But you see now, like, the arm looks like it's this long instead of this long. But that's okay because it's rotating. So really, yeah, like, using the measurements is, is really helpful. This elbow is actually probably a little too long. Because even though these are all the same length, um, because this is going to start behind the arm... This is probably going to have to be a little closer, and this arm will probably come up. So you can start playing with that kind of stuff. And that's why the structure phase is really important. Like, you can just start playing with those things and seeing what looks right before you go in and start adding the detail of, like, your like your muscles and stuff. You can really play with those. Same thing yeah. with, like, the hips. Uh, and this might actually get a little, a little screwy with the hips. Because, see, like now, because it's so far below... The foot's actually probably going to be back here and here, depending on how you want to draw the, the bend or the twist. Yeah, but that looks right. Like, to me, that looks right anyways. I think that's right. But, like, this leg, 
is going to be way shorter than this leg. These two bones should be the same length with the knee and the ankle missing. And so they're going to be the same length back here as each other, but not as the front legs. Yeah. The way I've been doing torsos, I tend to draw curvy trapezoid, curvy, curvy trapezoids, and then ovals more often than not. Yeah, and that's good too. Like, sorry, Druid, I'm taking over your space. You're fine. Yeah, like kind of what Druid's doing here. Like, I like doing this. I like doing. A lot of my characters do a lot of uh, hip bending because that's where I like to draw the lines and stuff. And so I'll generally do something like this for my bodies, so I can connect them. Um, and then from there, I usually draw the center line where I want the chest, the right front of the chest to be, and then I'll branch up to the shoulders to try to make like a triangle there. And that'll give me that general shape. And then you can make like the back if you want to be buffer or something. Yeah. You can keep extrapolating that out. But So I try to find gesture lines within the body before I start putting the structure lines in. Because like this right here, that doesn't make any sense. But... It's a good reference for me just to go from here to try to create the pec line, like where the pecs are gonna be. And then that will also inform like the rib cage and then the hips. And then where the pecs are, they always line up. The hips and the ribs line up as long as they're facing forward. And there's a whole bunch of little little landmarks you can start playing with. Yeah, but landmarks is what I was about to get to. Gotcha, go for it. Uh, if, yeah. So uh, when we talk about landmarks uh, on on figure drawing we're, we're talking about usually it's someplace where the bone is close to the skin uh and something that doesn't really move like the uh the collarbone here uh that is a that is like a, a classic landmark that like the collarbone like does move around but you can always see it pretty well uh and it's mo for the most part stable um the navel is another good one uh, the nipples are are actually pretty good. The uh, this top part of the uh, pelvis is called the iliac crest. Uh, that is usually pretty close to the skin. That's a good landmark. Mm -hmm. um, the elbow, the can wrist. I, can I do something real quick on your drawing? Yep. So the, the things that are always important for me, and this might not be the same for everybody, I'm going to switch to red just so it's more visible, Yeah, yeah. is like these two points here are going to anchor your collarbones. And then that yeah. will determine where your shoulders can move to. So like mm -hmm. you have a range of motion that you can kind of move your, your shoulders around there. But this yep. is going to anchor it. From there, if you go down, you're going to run into the nipple line, which is going to yep. be kind of the bottom of your, your pec. And yep. then that's going to go to the like the edges of your um your ribs and then the cool thing that i've found is that these are straight down to your hips yes so like um everything else in here like these lines the center line and then these four dots six dots up here if you count these two are like for me that's how you draw a body and if you turn your line layer lock off real quick druid just like click it off like you can see like that makes a straight thing and the whole body just kind of wraps around that, depending on what you're doing. So, yep, yep, that's what I do. So yeah, and so as long as long as you can like control your landmarks, you can figure out the proportions. Yeah. Um, and uh, like once you kind of understand that, it's all it's all kind of about rote memorization about what goes where. So for example, like rook rook through the the triangle here on the. Uh, on the front of the torso. <laughs> Sorry, uh, hold on. To... Pause, pause, pause. Dragon Drill says the nipples line up with the bones. No, the nipples are, um, they kind of line up with the ribs, but curving. They curve from the yeah, points yeah. on your they, neck down to the tips flip. of your ribs. They are. They're right in the middle of there, so they're a good a good lineup. Yeah. Um, here, I'll, I'll draw it in blue. Um, I should have interrupted you there. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. That that's fine. So this this thing that Rook did, where where he drew the he drew the curving line, uh, it's curved because it follows. You're trying to follow the contour of the rib, right? Which is a it's a bean shape, pretty much, right? Yeah. Um, but this this the kind bean of shape is how you draw girls. Yes. Yeah. Curvy. Uh, everybody's a bean shape, basically. Everybody's a bean. But um, yeah, yeah. So. 
uh, this this kind of triangle shape that sits on top tells you where the where the nipples are. Uh, just under the nipples is is where like the bottom part of the of the pecs are. Um, and if you're if you're drawing uh, women, the nipples are actually on the same place, and that's a that's a good way to help you figure out the mass of the breasts. I see a lot of people do uh, breasts on women way too high, like they put them they put them all the way up, uh, like up here. Uh, they should be. They should basically be about halfway through the bicep is where they start. Yeah, yeah. Or not uh, the bicep. And, and I'm sorry. The uh, the pec. The, the pec muscle. The pec. Yeah. Yeah. So the so the the pec, the mass of the pec. Well, Aggie just about exploded for me. Okay. So the the mass of the pec follows the contour of the of the rib cage like this, and it actually hooks. Uh, it it like twists around here and it hooks under the bicep and and under the the shoulder muscle, but you don't really need to like you don't need to worry too much about the anatomy of it. All you need to know is it's this it's this big kind of rounded shape, uh, and it goes under the under the shoulder muscle, uh, and. The bottom of the pec here uh, should be about halfway through your bicep, right? So, so your your pec should be about as tall um, from here to here as your bicep, as the visible part of your bicep is from here to, to like the elbow, uh, and the bottom of the pec should cut the bicep in half. And then if you're if you're drawing a, a woman, uh, the mass of the breast should be somewhere around here with the nipple being about there. Uh, and it's like figuring out proportions is just it's all about taking note of of how uh, of where everything sits in yeah. relation to everything else. And it's all just little tricks like that. Yeah. And I think I think some of the best ones for me you don't mind me drawing on your stuff again, Druid. Go for it. Is, like I said, going down, finding the sternum, and then I come back up, and I find out where I want these to wrap. And then I cut that, and that becomes my pecs. And then, like, if you if you are drawing, and you need to draw boobs, draw the boobas, they start about there, and then they kind of go down. And those can change, but that will also follow that line. And that's where you start getting structure, because you're, like, you're building the contour lines here. Um, and you can start following that stuff. So same yeah. thing with the ribs, and you start following those lines and following those shapes, and that really starts building everything out. So it's like it's it's just a process. It's a process of like starting with very very simple landmarks, adding the lines, adding contours, adding shapes, adding about, and like you just you keep building, build 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 yep. build. Yep. Um, and then the opposite side of that is like what I have over here, which. Um, even though I'm drawing all this, like I still drew the head. I drew basically the shape of the body I wanted, so I know where the body is. This arm is huge; like it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but that's okay for this one. <laughs> yep. Like so, so that's the thing where you can kind of like you can start playing with stuff once you kind of know what you're supposed to be doing, and you can get away with some things. But having understanding of the underlayer and the structure is kind of why it's important to like oh, draw your characters naked first. It's like well. You don't have to draw them naked, naked, but you should know what's underneath. Yeah, yeah. It's the as much as I like drawing naked characters, literally. Um, I think that uh, the better version of the draw your characters naked first is know what is underneath the stuff that you're drawing on top. So the the more you understand what is below the easier it is to render what's on top i had a i had a like how to draw anime book that i really liked i probably still have it i might have given it to someone um but something it always talked about was like the butt cheeks <laughs> yep. which sounds really stupid but it's like oh if you're drawing a character from the front why do you need to know what their butt looks like and it's because really like the hips like the bones and the way the hips and the bones are lined up um is part of it and then you have like your your actual bones here too which you're not going to see but understanding this structure 
and then understanding how the flesh kind of goes over the top of that mm-hmm. can really help you define, well, do they have a big butt? Do they have a small butt? How is that going to make the leg meet? Which, sorry if that sounds gross, but like, how does the leg meet actually like line up? And where does all that line up with everything else? So like, just because you're not going to see it doesn't mean you shouldn't know what it's going to do. Like, how does that meet up with these bones? Where does it link up with this? How do the muscle structures here work? So anatomy studies are really, really helpful because even if you're not going to see it at the end of the drawing, it's going to make your drawings look better. Like, just having you helpfully understand, hopefully understand, exactly what you're seeing. So Yep. And then you can really get in there and have some, like, good looking shapes so yeah just because you can't see the butt doesn't mean you don't need to know where it is doing drawing guides shorts may be popular maybe i tried to do some why you should draw videos and they have no views so yeah mm, they go back and watch those <laughs> those those kind of drawings actually those those kind of channels like art instruction channels don't actually get that many views yeah. because not a lot of people are actually trying to learn how to draw. It's yeah. much more fun usually to watch somebody else do all the hard work. I wanted to give him a big old beard. I think I gave him a mustache. This looks just like Gandalf, but Gandalf was kind of homeless, so... I don't know how to make how to make a uh, a hobo wizard. Maybe he needs like a bindle. A vittles bag. I even tried doing a few live streams where it's just like, ask me your art questions. And I, uh, I think I had like one person talking to me. So yeah, I would love to do like an art specific streams, like just art, how to draw streams, but they don't, they don't perform well. <laughs> they just don't. So yeah. I think people asking it's... questions during the live stream is a much better uh, medium right now. I agree. I also think it's probably more helpful because uh, there is, oh, there are so many tips and tricks, and uh, oof, like as I as I, I've been studying painting and trying to figure out how to paint, like I, I, it's it's easy to when we're sitting here drawing like this to think of myself as an expert and. To some extent I am, but there are so many people out there who have information I don't have about about drawing and painting and sculpture, which is sure. my specialty and forte, right? So, like, there's, there is so much to learn. Um, it's, uh, even if we just... The, uh, okay. Meat and potatoes is, um, you're probably going to get better advice uh if you come in and ask for specifically what you need uh rather than uh us kind of randomly uh trying to give extremely generalized advice yeah yep uh it's like world building details that might never come up could still help you work out other things in the setting maybe exactly. a little bit more ratty filthy for being homeless i mean so that, that's the problem is like now if i want it to be more of anything, I basically have to redraw it because um, it's too sketchy. <laughs> so I don't think I, I, there's too many things on the list today. So I think I'm just going to stop here. But we have a little bit of a ratty. Maybe I'll add some darkness. I'll just make him dirty. <laughs> I'm going to add a little more detail. But, um, and yeah, what you're talking about, Dragon Turtles, actually. Um, imagine with art, there's a lot of what is your secret? I have no idea. A little bit, yeah. Um, that, that goes back to like iterative design. Which is like blank. Magic exists in this world. Ask a question. Go back to the beginning. Clarify. Clarify what magic means. Okay, great. Ask a new question. More clarification, right? So, like, it's just you just keep coming back to it over and over and over again. It's the same with art. 
So like, I'm gonna draw a wizard. Well, what kind of hat does he have? Okay, is that important? <laughs> like, you, know, you just you just keep coming back and you keep redoing it. And and once again, like I think the biggest hurdle people have to make in art is being okay with a piece either A, not being done, or B, never being done because it's just like prep for the next stage of the art. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I did that um, too when I, I started. Like this used to be kind of like, I'm done with this piece forever now. And I will never, and like my lines were just sketchy and gross and like, I kind of liked it. I still kind of love this, but I can also make really, really cool art if I keep going. Lou Lurker um, here, but I just wanted to say all of these last few minutes have been very informative as a big artist, as a beginner artist. Also love seeing the stuff you guys are doing on stream. Yeah, no problem, Helio. I, uh, there's something that I want to add to, to what you just said as advice to, sure. to Dragon Turtle, because I, um, I watched the VOD of, was it last Wednesday when you guys were, were like really getting into it? Maybe. Um, and like, yeah, you, you talked a little bit about Aphantasia and yeah. and um uh and people having uh an idea of of what they're drawing and like I wanted to add to that and I was kinda of bummed that I didn't get to and so I'm gonna take the opportunity now. Sure. Um I'm gonna tell you right now, uh I've got a pretty good visual uh Oh, like right. like yeah visual memory really i've got pretty good control uh of my visual imagination um i've talked to a lot of other artists about about this about like what the image they have in their head what it actually is and, and how much detail they have uh and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you right now like um there's what well, like when you're it's a rare thing <laughs> Which it, really yeah, has. it's it's a rare it's thing. Ex it's extremely rare, and and even as what I have is still imperfect, and like, and you need to. Every artist who has a pretty decent visual imagination needs to become comfortable with the idea that uh, your visual imagination is actually garbage, uh, no matter how good it actually is. It's actually garbage, because. Um, you your your visual imagination doesn't calculate in the problems you're going to run into it doesn't calculate the flaws so it's always going to be perfect in your imagination and it's never going to be perfect on the page absolutely never going to be perfect on the page so get comfortable with the idea that it's it's always going to be flawed you're never going to get exactly what you think it's supposed to be on the page and that's good actually that's that is one it's part of the process sure. to to figure out what you're drawing as you go um and it's another part of the process to let go of the idea of your your perfect image and let it become the thing that it's going to become hmm. let it become an actual real thing and not just the the air quotes perfect concept that you had in your brain i had uh, i was watching a youtube short and they were just kind of saying the same thing um, and it's just that most artists, like, you can have an idea of what you want to draw, but yep. putting it on the page is a completely different thing. Like, even if it's a pose you want to draw, a lot of the times, which I think is really interesting, um, this happens in 3D a lot. Like, you can pose somebody a specific way, but then even yep. after you pose them, now you have to think about, well, wh what's the camera lens I'm using? Like, where is that placed? Where do I want to look at them from this pose? Um, and then you can also add things like perspective and depth of field. Like, so it's just like, there's, there's almost nothing that is just, I have this exact thing in my head and I have to print it out. Um, I, I definitely know of some people that can do that <laughs> where they just like, <laughs> but, uh, most people don't, most people, you have an idea and then you have to suss it out. Like, and yep. that's why it's important to have all those structural understanding of like, if I want this pose from this angle, how do I have to move this person? And that's where reference comes in and like having uh, pose figures and stuff. Like all those things help. All those things help. Yep. So yep. it's definitely, don't feel like you have to just take the thing in your head and put it on the page. Cause like, that's just like, unless you are constantly thinking in two dimensional flat space, that's not what's in your head. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, if we're, if we're talking about a uh, sculpture, I can a hundred percent print out exactly what's, what's in my head. Uh, far more often than I can on paper, at least. Yeah, um, and I, I would and... assume that has something to do with, like, 
you thinking in three dimensional space because like you're thinking of what it looks like from all sides at all time, not yes. not a page, right? Like you're not thinking like yeah, what it yeah. would look like on paper. So yeah. even even this uh, beefy tiger brawler guy, like I know what his butt looks like. Gotcha. Cool. <laughs> so um, yeah, but like um, as much as I like, as I still like, I still struggle with this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I talk about my toxic perfectionism all the time. I still struggle with because because I have such a, a strong visual imagination. I'm constantly trying to to get exactly what. <sighs> I think it's supposed to be. Um, and I thought about that the other day, and actually, that's for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it in a second. Yeah. But, um, but like the the. Uh, it's. Even when I can print out exactly what the perfect thing is supposed to be, it's usually far worse once I've gotten it out than something that I have. Uh, something that I have. I had to figure out what it is mm -hmm. when I get it on paper because when I'm getting something on paper and I'm not 100% sure what it's supposed to be uh, that gives me an opportunity to actually design it when it's just a thing in my brain um, I'll, I'll like all it is 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 an idea and if I'm not willing to play with that idea then it usually turns out shit yeah. so like so you need to long story short you need to be willing to let the image in your brain go and experiment and iterate like Rook has said a thousand times and just like play with it have fun and when it doesn't turn out be okay with throwing it away and starting over cool okay uh, I roll a 19 which is a night hag that steals people's organs uh, it's a night hag warlock patron so it's it's a <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a hag that uh gets her warlocks high, and then steals their organs. Gross. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Um, and then i got to catch up here with... Uh, I have a pareidolia. I don't know what that is. You might have to explain what that is. Which kind of helps me drawing things from other things. I realize the things are in my head. I don't always... Oh, yeah. Does this apply to real, uh, really stylized art or just stuff that is more realistic? It does apply to really everything. stylized art. Um, yeah, it applies to everything. Uh... I was, it, I was, it also it also applies to poetry, uh, music. Uh, it, it applies to any creative endeavor. Organs. Yeah, um, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, the tendency uh, parad paradolia is the tendency to perceive a specific, often meaningful image in a random or ambiguous visual pattern. Hmm. Seeing shapes in clouds. Ah, okay, gotcha. Uh, what was it? Oh, oh, the perfectionist thing. Something my um, my uncle taught me. Who he's a photographer. He's a wildlife photographer. Um, one of the things he would make me do when I was trying to learn photography uh -huh. is he would give me a locked or fixed uh, lens. And so, and that was the challenge. It's like. You can't zoom in. You can't change things. You have to get yeah. do what you can with just this, and so that that helped me. Um, and this is back when like not it wasn't a digital camera. <laughs> like it was yeah. so it's like you have twenty four pictures to do the best you can with just this, um, and that always broke my brain a little bit. And it was it was really challenging because it was it, all of a sudden the only thing you could do was focus. And so when you have those limited things, you can't get the perfect shot that you want. You have to find the best shot you can get. And I think that helped me a lot kind of break through break through that that like trying to find the perfect thing. So Yeah. Yeah. Um maybe just try that. Just try like really, really limit yourself sometimes and see what happens. Because like you used to draw with just just the mouse. Just and the I mouse. think yep. I think that made you like that way improved your your 2d skills for sure um yeah i think you're right well i don't know if they improved him but like when we started drawing it was a struggle and now i think you're pretty fluid with it so it certainly made me think about things differently and anything that makes you think about things differently reconsider your your perception mm -hmm. uh is probably a good thing for for developing creatively
But yeah, um, Repo Man, but Warlocks. Yeah, that's a good one. Wanting the perfect thing. It's just much as never happens. Yeah, it, it uh, it's like you can imagine, you know, infinite colors. You can't draw infinite colors, so yeah. good luck. There was one of the, like, I think it was Love, Death, and Robots. One of the, uh, one of the shorts was, like, humans create AI, and then AI starts creating art and stuff, and at the end of the day, like, AI eventually turns itself into a tiny blue-thinking memory chip. It's like, that's the ultimate expression of ingenuity, is a useless thinking object. <laughs> it's just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you spend all that time trying to make something as human as possible, and then the only thing it can do is go back. Like, that's its that's its ultimate goal. And it's like, well. There's a, there's a lot of deep shit you could pull out of that. <laughs> that I don't Everything really want to. returns to crab. Yep. Oop, and Aggie crashed. Hold on. Stylization is something else we can talk about a little bit. I think on the same note, um, stylization is really just adhering to a set of rules. Or, um, and, and a lot of the time when we talk about style, we talk about like the way a artist draws something. And really, what it is is that they have maybe not a set of rules, but like they have a preferred way of doing something. Yeah, and so uh, that methodology becomes of their, simplifying yeah, methodology. That's a great way to look at it. Um, and so. Um, when people say stuff like, oh, I, I, when the biggest example of, of issue I have with this is when you're talking to young artists, you'll say like, oh, you could probably work on your proportions a little bit. And they're like, oh, it's just my style. And it's like, your style is lazy. Like you're still, like, what, what's going on? Um, there's, there's a big difference because if it was your style, it would be consistent. Like that's really the, the, the argument I think is missing Yeah, yeah. is consistency. So, uh, and consistency comes with practice and muscle memory. Uh, and kind of intention, I think, is the other thing. Like Jackson Pollock, <laughs> I think, you know, very chaotic, very yep. random. But yep. um, for people that love Jackson Pollock paintings, they can tell that it's his, for the most part. Like, there's going to be forgeries and stuff. That doesn't matter. But, like, there is, there is a, a purposeful, intentional style that maybe the artist doesn't really, like, try to actively go through, but has because of just the things that they're, their methodology for. So when you're looking at something like drawing a style of a specific like anime character or something from like Invader Zim, Invader Zim has a very specific style. It's a lot of blocky shapes. Um, like look at something like uh, like Invader Zim, which I'm saying because Atomic posted something in the Discord, uh, versus <laughs> like Phoenix and Ferb. Like if you compared those two, they're very geometric, but they're different. Like you can tell they're different. You can tell which characters from which which show yeah. Um, yeah that's what we're talking about with style and so like a lot of the times when you're drawing something if you're trying to capture a certain style you can critique that you can say oh this matches the style this doesn't match the style um and when you say oh well i i should, don't need to do that because it's my style i should have been able to see that like i should have been able to pick up on that versus practicing something a specific way so that's really what people say. That's that's when people kind of use stylization as a crutch. Um, and so, if I ever yeah. if I ever look at your stuff, and you, uh, <clears throat> that's super good. <laughs> uh, and and I give you a critique or something, and you have the urge to say like, "Oh, well, that's just the style." Like, really, really think about it first, because it might be. It might absolutely be. Um, but I usually won't critique things that I think. Could be a, could have been a stylistic choice because that's that's weird. <laughs> so why did you make him look like Naruto? Because well, I'm trying to draw Naruto. Like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Versus, as long as you embrace that, that's fine. Yeah, like there's there's there are a lot of things you can do if you want to replicate a style, and I highly suggest people doing that, especially when you're trying to like find yeah. what style you like, replicating yeah. different styles is a great way to kind of branch out and try new things and see what you like. Yeah. Um, emulating artists you mm -hmm. admire. 
Yep. And so, like, for me, a lot of my style, I would say, is probably influenced the most by, like, Frazetta and Wayne Reynolds. But they don't really look like that. Like, my style does yeah. not look like yeah. their stuff. Uh, because they're, they're just, they, they have so very specific stuff. But that's the kind of stuff that I emulate when I look at it. And it kind of comes into my own thing. Um, Wayne Reynolds has an amazing... Uh, collection of form like he finds shapes and adds stuff to it that i just my brain doesn't do yeah and i i want it i want it so bad i just gotta practice more any tips on coming that is also super shapey yeah and like i can't i can't i honest i don't want to say i don't like because i love all of frazetta's stuff i'm less interested in like his full paintings and i'm obsessed with his sketches yeah like they're the same thing because, like, he did all the sketches and then he would paint from his sketches. I love the sketches. Yeah, it's just that's just what it is. Any tips for coming up with your own art style you really like, and is it good idea to cultivate more than one style? Uh, I really like your style. Thank you, Dragon Turtle. If you the tips I can give you for coming up with your art style is just emulation. Like, take the art that you like and draw it, and try to figure out what it is you like about that art. So, like. Um, line width, uh, shading techniques, uh, stylization of form. So like one thing we can talk about a lot is anime characters. Like why do anime yeah. characters look the way they do? Because they look like cats. <laughs> like, that's it. I want to draw my character to look like a cat. And so that's where you start getting uh, discrepancies between like Western anime and old traditional anime um, and like manga artists and stuff because they'll, they'll have their own kind of stylization and way to do it because they broke off from the norm so yeah style can be material choices tools limitations patterns etc size on certain aspects well so yeah that's true that's true like but once again like frazetta frazetta has a style um that he does that transcends the media like yeah, his yeah. it's partially the way he draws um draws the human form uh he has a set type of like uh poses he likes he likes very yep. elongated poses and like open poses. And uh, yeah. and dark colors are just shapes. Yep. Uh, all of his shadows are just big blocks of shapes. All of his hair just big blocks of shapes. Uh, most everything that's red also is just just a big shape. Mm. Um, which is what I meant when I said Frazetta is also really shapey. <laughs> Inferno, is that from Big O? Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> that was drawn by the same guys that did the Batman animated series, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> and you can you can tell. tell. <laughs> yep. You can absolutely tell. Like that's that's the point of a style, right? Like you feel it. You just feel it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna look at different in crayon. It's gonna look different in crayon. That's it can it can look different in crayon. But like when I draw something in crayon, you can still tell that it's mine. <laughs> like it's uh it's, same actually. Yeah. yeah. It, it it is partially just the the choice of the way the artist does something. Like it very much is. Yeah, it's 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 about how they how they move their wrist to do certain shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about how it's about how we choose to simplify certain things consistently. Um, how we choose, like, which methodology we choose to build up our bodies, which proportions we choose to adopt. Um, I, th I think a good, another way to look at it, too, is, like, style can be replicated, because... Yeah. Like, if you look at, like, Lilo and Stitch, the person that... The, the art director for that show, for that movie, um, that is indicative of their style. Like, they did all of the style sheets for that, and then the animators had to replicate it. Um, yep. And it does look slightly different from like his sketches, because it's it's cleaned up in a certain way that it can be repeatable for animation. That's just how that works. But uh, at the end of the day, like it's gonna have a very different vibe than I don't know what's another good the original Robin Hood movie, right? <laughs> like when yeah, when Walt yeah. Disney was still doing sketches. So. Um, so yeah, you, you can very much emulate those kind of things. And I actually know, man, there was one, uh, someone I knew in, in high school. Uh, they were amazing at drawing, like, the Disney-style art. 
It was just, she could just, she could, anything you want to draw on, she could make it look like Disney. And I hope she got a job at Disney eventually. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of lost touch with her. But, uh, but it's, yeah, it's just finding those things you like and then being able to do them are, are great. House styles are totally a thing. House styles? Like, oh, like studio? Studio houses? Yeah. Pixar I mean, yeah, is a little you... different because of the, like, the yeah. way things are made are the same. But because it's 3D, like, you can have a pretty hard reference. And it's a little a little less um, has a different feel, but you can definitely see it. Like you still see the style for three D modeling and stuff. Directors uh, tend to have their own style as well. Yeah, I can I can mm. tell a, a Gany Tartakovsky from a mile away. Yeah. Um, including the stuff that he did that that he was not like one of the the concept artists for. Like Dexter's Lab, for instance. Sure. But you can also like I definitely also see his uh, his art style in the uh, the Clone Wars miniseries. Oh yeah. In Samurai Jack, like Samurai Jack is peak. Gandhi in my mind, uh, and in Primal. Um, Primal, yeah. Business cat. That hand is really lazy, but I'm going to leave it. Why do hags have super long arms? Is that a Mercer thing? I don't think it I, is. I don't know. Uh, I, I think he, he I got think it from it art. Like, I'm thinking even back to, like, Snow White, the Snow White Witch, right? Like, I think it's just kind of like that spindly long arm thing. It's kind of yeah. creepy. Otherworldly. Yeah. I do think it is just... A little just, uncanny past artists playing with proportion i don't think it it is has ever been like specifically canonical okay at least not in any of the folklore that i have read because i mean like the five e hags are like bent noodles that arms go to the floor yeah Mercer's hag specifically had an extra set of elbows, didn't she? Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Don't yeah. they? Yeah. And depending on which hag you're talking about, they also have different body shapes. Yeah. In that regard, I'm really only familiar with the um, Pathfinder hags. It is really funny to me, like, when... Um, I don't... I don't well, recently I've been able to play a lot more than I've been able to DM. Yeah. Um, and I'll have certain things, like thinking about hags with long arms and stuff. And then, like, Kevin the Necromancer and Lars will DM a game and they'll talk about that stuff. But they'll just be talking about, like, the pictures from the DM, from the monster manual. And yeah. it still, like, kind of fits my, the vibe that I was thinking about differently. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that is, that is like, that is kind of iconic of, of hags. <laughs> That's great. And so I get kind of a fresh perspective on some things that I, I kind of take for granted of like, did I come up with that? It's like, no, no, that's that's 100% just the way everybody thinks. It's like, that's great. Yep. That's good. Influenced by previous art. Mm-hmm. What if William Defoe was the skin saw man? <laughs> Skinny minis hags. <laughs>
Powerball is over a billion dollars. Barf. If I win, I'll try to give away $10,000 a month for a little while. Can you imagine? That would be so cool. That would be very cool. I can imagine the taxes being a pain. Yeah, but at the same time, if you have a billion dollars and they want to take like more than half of it, you still have half a freaking billion dollars. <laughs> like, <laughs> at some point, like just having more than like two million dollars, nothing matters after that. It's just like, what what am I gonna do with it? Two million dollars will pay for literally everything that doesn't cost a million dollars. And yes, I realize that there are like million dollar homes and stuff. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need a million dollar home. It would take care of the college fund for your kid. Mm hmm. I'd buy a college. <laughs> I can actually see you doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the point in my life where it's like, uh, I just do not want to work at another restaurant ever again. Mm -hmm. But if I had to, I would try to buy the restaurant. <laughs> I could I could probably run a restaurant right now, like, if I had to. Um, I do not have the money to do so. Like, it would not be, like... But, like, if I had to, I could sit down and I could actually start up a, a small restaurant. And it would be a pain in the ass and I would hate myself. But, like, that's a thing. <laughs> that's a thing you could do. I'd have to be a waiter again. When I was younger, that was kind of the thing. I was like, oh, maybe I'll retire someday and, like, have a bistro. And just do that. Gastro pub. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh god. I know a lot of people that run little coffee shops. Mhm. Mm yeah. One of my friends started a uh, started a not a food truck, like a coffee truck. What was that? That's pretty fun. Mhm. Mm They're liking that. They got married, quit their jobs and started a coffee truck. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that gnarly nose. It's like a crow hag. <laughs> uh, yeah, craw hag. Mm -hmm. From Pathfinder. Clearly you need to build a brick house. The bricks being stacked of dollar bills. Dripped in sugar glue. <laughs> There's... <laughs> so, hear me out. Here's the thing. I used to... I used to use quarters for tokens... Um, and at one point in time I was looking and I'm like I'm going to move to 50 cent pieces um, because they're bigger and then I was like yeah, they're too big for the squares I can go to dollar coins and then I'm like I could just glue pictures of things onto the dollar coins how much does a wooden nickel cost that's the right <laughs> size and it's like I'm looking at that and it's like oh yeah these are like 50 cents a piece and it's like I might as well fucking use the quarters because it's cheaper than buying the thing. <laughs> it's the same thing with... Uh, and I was doing the same thing when I was looking at, like, I want to produce my own metal coins. That was something we tried to do a few years ago. Uh -huh. uh, and it's like, you can 3D print these for pretty cheap. But if I want to made out of metal, this gold... Gold. I'm saying gold. It's going to be, like, zinc or some shit. But, like, gold coin is going to cost, like, a dollar fifty to produce... I'm just going to use regular dollar coins. Like, <laughs> so it's super weird looking at that kind of stuff when, like, when you're trying to create a replica of something that uh, would cost more than the thing it's supposed to represent. It's just like, this is weird. This is weird. I don't like it. So it's always funny. Kind of, the, I guess, like, the same premise, like, a penny costs, like, a penny and a Three half to pennies. produce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Government waste. Here we go. A nickel costs 
I believe it's 11 cents to make. Mm -hmm. I think dimes are still relatively cheap to make. Um, Because they're tiny. Yeah, now that they're not made out of silver anymore. Yeah, now that they're made out of steel. I think, I think Nick, yeah, I think dimes cost like 11 cents to make. I think they're pretty close. This hand is also twisted real funky. Because of Druid's rest, well, wear tiger. Why do I keep, I can't read that word. It's super weird. I went looking for a Rakshasa wrestler and apparently it's more than one human wrestling nickname. Oh, nice. I am the Rakshasa. Yeah, what's going on with that hand? Oh, uh, I see what's, uh, it, it, that point? No, I see it. I okay. see it too. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna erase it and start over. And just your thumb's fucking... pointing this way, but your hand's pointing yep. this way. <laughs> yep. I like the hand. I think the hand looks good. You could probably just cut it, and move it up a little bit. Yeah. And then just readjust the palm. I just, I don't want to look at it for for thirty seconds, so I moved on to the tail and gotcha. I'm gonna come back to it. <laughs> yeah, I would rotate the thumb ninety degrees, and I think it'd be fine. That's smart. He's bent the wrong direction. Uh, yeah, we already read it's that. Okay. Broken. I broke it. Broke his hand. Broke his hand wrestling. Okay, I'm gonna give this like a surgeon's kit. The Earth Junasi cheated. Turned himself into a uh, secretly magically turned himself into a. Rock elemental. Oh, and broke his hand? <laughs> yeah. There, see, I've come up with lore now. I don't have to fix the drawing. <laughs> you never said he didn't have a broken hand. <laughs> I, I'm having... Um, I was drawing a spider folk yesterday. And uh -huh. the other artist on the team drew their spider folk... Like ninety five percent spider, and, and and I went very like very humanoid, uh -huh. and so there was this this we had this discrepancy where we had it like in the meeting we're like oh no which one do we go for because like they're both great, but like shoot, <laughs> and so and uh and while his I should say there I don't know if it's he, um their art is really good. I don't I don't like the full spider. <laughs> I just like I just don't like the way the full spider looks. And so I'm struggling with that. But like it's it's one of those things where like art can be really good but you don't have to enjoy it. Yep. And I I was struggling with that. I was just like we didn't we didn't have a, a clean, a clear cut description of was this supposed to be very spider or no spider? And it's like, ah shoot. <laughs> we did two very different styles. And it's cool. It's super cool. But it's also really creepy, and I hate it. <laughs> it looks awesome. I have to. I have to reiterate. I hate it, but it looks awesome. <laughs> oh God! Why? Why would you do this? <laughs> What time is it? Twelve, one o'clock. Okay, we're doing all right. I feel like I need a little more detail on this. I don't know what to do. Maybe I can just fake some vague details in here, like little, uh, little. I mean, if they're stealing organs, they probably need like some jars. Let's put some jars in there. I need good ideas for mead labels. I'm gonna try to make some mead. Mm. Uh. 
<laughs> I was watching. Um... I mean, it should be it should be fairy themed, right? Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Fairy riding a bee. Yeah. I was watching uh, at Journey's End, the Thlaffle or whatever the hell her name is. Sure. And uh, I thought it was really funny because there's a moment when they like meet a bunch of demons, and I'm like, "Oh, we're not gonna know if the demons are evil or not." And then the very next scene, the demons were like, "It's so funny how evil we are, and the humans are so stupid." And I was like, "Oh, that was that was nice of the writers. No ambiguity." <laughs> Well, <laughs> just throw that yeah. out there uh and i think that's very indicative of that show like that show is very much like this is not about drama this is not about like power creep this is this is like a slice of life but in an adventure and it's like that's hmm, yeah, kind of neat so like that and uh what am i looking at inferno that does not look appropriate with the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just her staff. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. It looks like a giant sensor bar. In the in the steel still thumbnail. But no, I'm digging that show. I'm digging that show, and I'm digging the uh, the dungeon show. Delicious in a dungeon. They're very uh -huh. chill. They're very chilled and laid back, and I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Is that the reverse of thanks? I hate it. I hate this great job. Uh, maybe I don't know. You're allowed to not like. You're allowed to not like things, but you should be able to appreciate things. So, and then there are also other things where uh, things are bad and people should feel bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Specifically, like the wall that was put up. Um, I think it was in. Norway. Maybe it was in America. I don't remember. This guy built like a two kilometer long steel wall just to block the path of, pathway of people that worked at a building. And it's just like, fuck you. Like, why? Why would you do that? It says things. It's like, it's just a dick move. Like, if your art installation is punching people in the face, not cool. <laughs> like, like, not cool. Uh, is that one of the animes that Drew doesn't like? Jobless reincarnation? I don't know. I don't uh, think so. No. Not Mishoku Tensei. No. Alright, I think I'm done with this hag. Get out of here, you old bat. Natural one. A grumpy elf druid with a Hawaiian shirt, a straw hat, and very droopy ears. I'm not gonna draw a Hawaiian shirt. Dang it! I've done the like trick. They're on vacation. Yep. <laughs> uh, what color are we doing here? Blue. Blip, 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 and full. Springy elf ears. Brew, brew. What was I doing? Hawaiian shirt elf. Gonna draw Stinian in a Hawaiian shirt. Ooh, yeah, there's new Final Fantasy stuff out today. I gotta go do that. Oh, yeah, there's a new expansion pre order on bundle. The Wii. Yeah. So apparently, there's a new mount. I'll have to go see what it is. I know that character. Is that from Records of Lotus? Yes, it is. <laughs> I haven't watched that in forever. Mm. 
Nope. I need some Magnum PI. Uh, <laughs> reference. How draw Hawaiian shirt? Head. Mustache. Block body. All of this is counterpo to how I draw elves. chest hair. When you say droopy ears, like I have a lot of different, I have a lot of different feelings about this. <laughs> Should I keep the mustache? <laughs> I might keep the mustache. Yeah, why not? I've also just realized I've given him the, uh, the one piece straw hat. <laughs> <laughs> I just zoomed out and looked at the whole canvas and I have not felt this inadequate in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like struggling with this shirt and it's just like, ah, oh, Tiger Man! Shit. Yeah, but I've worked a long time on this type. That's true. Like, there's a there's a discrepancy in intent and effort. <laughs> I'm gonna look up Magnum PI. <laughs> 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 oh, I forgot they redid it. It's not Tom Selleck anymore. Yeah, you should just get some Tom Selleck in a floral shirt. They they really should not have redone it. Honestly, I wish they would just. Start trying to, like, at least pretend like they're trying to find new IPs, and and leave the classics alone. Yeah. I don't know. I I think I will always disagree with that, just because like new stuff doesn't make the old stuff bad. <laughs> so that, it's like I just I don't that's know. true. As long as you're not trying to replace it, right? Take a side, Inferno. Jeez. No, I, I think that there is a time and a place, right? Uh, um, yeah. I mean, there are certain things that are better the way that they are done, and so long as you recognize that, you know, you should be able to try something different. Just don't pass it off as, oh, this is the definitive, right? Yeah, because I mean, like, we never would have gotten a second Dune movie or a remake. Which, uh, Technically, the f that's a third or fourth. Right, that, that's kind of what right? I'm getting at, yeah. yeah. Same thing, like, the Spider-Mans would have only ever been the first Spider-Mans, and I like Tom Holland Spider-Mans. Like, I'm waiting for Harry Potter to be redone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> not, not until... Not until not all the until wokeness until... comes down. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Not until Joanne stops um, shooting herself in the foot politically. Yep. Totally fine with that, too. I like Clone Wars. I'm glad Clone Wars got a few different iterations of different things. And eh. like, I, I, the, the few things they've done with Ghostbusters, um, even the, the, uh, oh man, what the hell is her name? The remake they did with the SNL cast, women whose names I can't remember. Oh, um, um, Damn it, no, I can't remember either. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Uh, I don't think that was a good Ghostbuster movie. It was still a fun movie. Like, I think it was fine. <laughs> and I like Ghostbusters. So, while it's the worst Ghostbusters movie, it's still it's still okay. And, like, now the new ones? Oh, I love them. I love them. They're good. Even though I still have a problem with uh, Paul Rudd. It's just, like... I mean, he just brings correct, nothing to movies. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the latest Ghostbusters, they actually leaned more into doing things similar to what you would get with practical effects, right? Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that—that's really the problem. Like the 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 re the the female cast one of Ghostbusters was essentially the same concept. Of, as the first Ghostbusters. Like, hey, what if we gave these four comedians a chance to make this movie? And they did. And it's like, cool, that's fine. Eh. Like, and they, they leaned really heavy into the, 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 the CGI aspect of it and, like, and focused wholly on the characters instead of, like, the actual movie making any sense. So it's like, it's not a great Ghostbuster movie, but it's still a funny movie. Um, Whereas the new ones, they're like, okay, well now let's go back and actually like look at the original source movie and add on to that. And it's like, cool, I like that too. Um, I just I don't compare them. So it's kind of the same thing with the Spider Man movies, like the first ones that came out, the Amazing Spider Man ones with Toby, what's his butt, um, Tobey Maguire. Yeah, I like those were those were made by Sam Raimi, I think, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, uh, and Fair while like, while I the like third movie. Them. The third movie is my litmus test for whether or not a movie is bad. Um, I will I will watch a movie up to the point where it's worse than Spider Man three, and then I just won't watch it. <laughs> like that's that's the cutoff for me. It's like I loved this. I, I watched this movie because it was Spider Man, and uh, that's the only reason I didn't walk out. So, <laughs> uh, but. Um, the remakes. I mean, I, I think I, I like having I like having iterations. I like having different visions of stuff. They don't have to be good. They don't have to be like completely replace things. So like Magnum PI, I don't care. Like I'm, yeah, I'm not a super big fan of the old one, but the old one still exists. So, so it's not really like nothing lost for that in my mind. Which so people yeah, disagree with. I, I mean, so in my book, it, if you're making if you're redoing a movie uh, of a specific thing try and bring that story potentially in a different way right mm -hmm. rather than for example um, the new Halo uh, miniseries oh that's not a Halo movie though <laughs> it's not at all it is set in supposedly the Halo universe but the story is not Halo at all right, right. whatsoever the imagery kind of is, but... Yeah, I saw the beam sword. <laughs> right? But that, in my opinion, is what definitely would not make a, a good remake. Sure. Right? Yeah. If you're, if you're taking the Halo IP and you are blending part of what Halo is in there, then, then yeah, ah. you could cut loose. Thank you for the membership. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that's true. Brian, thank you for the, uh, the the membership gift for Elliot. Enjoy that. Um, sorry, uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm trying to catch up on chat, and I'm uh, yeah, war, thinking about what you said. So many. Yeah, I think I think that's so. Like there there have been some really cool Halo shorts on YouTube, and I think those are cool. And like they even did like some animated stuff. 
which I think was really cool. The books are good. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, I haven't played Halo since, I don't know. I didn't even play Halo 4, to be honest. And anything past that, I just stopped caring because, like, it didn't feel the same as the old <laughs> stuff. I played a little bit of Halo Infinite, which felt back to, like, back to form. But, um, but yeah, like, I'm not... I'm not going to waste my time being upset or sad that they're still making Halo content because I still, I love Halo in general. And so like when the new stuff came out and I started watching the reviews and like listening to people talk about the series and it's just like, that sucks. Like I probably won't watch it then. And that's, that's about all I really feel like I need to care about, you know? So that's that's really the, that's really the issue I have. (laughs) Sorry, Drew. This is a weird tangent for (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. The thing I like, I do tend to agree with you about the more content is generally better. Mm-hmm. There are there are a couple of areas where I I will tend to disagree with that, and that is uh, that is corporate cash grabs sure. tend to make me really sad. Cough cough the the, um, the, the Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's really what that was. But so. There's, and, and to be fair, it's not like the material itself that 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 frustrates me. It's the uh, it's the company deciding that they can take an IP that I enjoy and exploit me for money. That's that's the part that's mm. that makes me go. I don't want to engage with any of this anymore. You ruined it. Yeah, that so, definitely feels like the showrunners. Yeah, and uh, really what I was trying to get at before I went off on my tangent was, Mm. um, like, I was trying to say, like, we've discovered what kind of old man you're going to be, Druid. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, That's really what I was trying to get to. But I think think that attitude is better than, like, the the negative aspect of it, right? Like, instead of getting on the internet and, like, complaining and giving people free press, just don't engage with it. Like, if it's not something you're interested in, just don't engage with it. So I think yeah. I think that's really what I want to get at. Uh, I absolutely love the content. I play D and D myself, and it's very fun. So getting to learn stuff from YouTube helps, and learning to be amazing. So thank you. Yeah, no problem, Addy. Um, welcome in. The Halo show is a great example of what I hate. They basically just took the IP and used it to skin, used the suit skin suit, yeah, to push it on whatever they wanted. Yeah, exactly. Like that. <laughs> that's exactly what Drew was talking about too. Like it's the commercialization yeah. of something, and so yeah. it's it's very much well the um, over commercialization of something. Yeah. That, Beating a dead horse until it's until it's lo- dead and gone. Um, I was honestly very afraid that the Netflix uh, live action Last Airbender was going to do that to the series. I'm glad. You mean like the, the movie did? Consensus... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad that the general consensus is not that. Right. But like, I uh, the the thing uh, the thing is that like the movie actually happened at a point where people still where where this series had not really been ruined so people who were fans of uh of the original series um were able to walk out of the theater and be absolutely pissed that they were disrespected so horribly uh and then be perfectly willing to continue on loving the thing and yeah. uh and just pretend that uh that m night Shyamalan doesn't exist and he did not hurt them the way that they, that he did the twist this time is i don't know how, i didn't read the script it's like you <laughs> son of a bitch um yeah i think i think a good that's a good that's a good way to look at it as well of just like um i see this false advertising you promised to halo ghostbusters etc but it isn't that's fair too i think that's a good way yeah. to look at it yeah. um and and in those aspects i think that that's kind of the problem with like the commercialization of something like usually somebody something that people love comes from someone creating something they love yeah. and that's why like i think like the underworld movies is a, I, I just watched them a little bit ago so that's why they're fresh in my mind mm-hmm. but like the first one was like kind of novel because someone's like what if the matrix but with vampires is like that's cool let's do that and then the second and third one just like they they just felt like they had to keep going it's like huh, yeah. okay, that's weird. And yeah. then by the time you got to the third one, they're like, we made an anime. Did you watch the anime? It's like, no, I didn't. They're like, oh, <laughs> then this isn't going to make any sense. It's like, great. Well, okay. <laughs> so it's it's very much like there's, I think the, the, the kind of, the need to continue 
And I feel like this happens a lot with, okay, if we're going to make a movie, we have to make three of them. It has the yeah. same the same effect. Even though it's like, it is a continuation of the thing you love. Um, like, that commercialization just happens because it, it's 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 being stretched longer than it should have. And that happens with TV yes. shows too. It's like, I have a really cool yeah. idea. It's like, it has to be 20 episodes. And it's like, oh, well, we're going to make up a bullshit story for six of these episodes. <laughs> and it's like, awesome. It also Ooh. happens with book series. Mm-hmm. It happens with book series too. So, so I, I don't know if it's, I don't want to say it's just like, I don't think it's necessarily the fault of someone, someone at some point must've been like, oh, it'd be really fun if I could make X movie. Um, versus a company being like, we need to jump on this bandwagon right now and get get yeah. something out. So yeah, with the Halo thing, I think that's basically what happened. Someone's like, I have this cool story, and they're like, the story kind of sucks. They're like, yeah, but what if we made it a Halo movie? And they're like, mm, people yeah, will buy that. But, it's like, oh well. well. What if we make <laughs> a story inside the Halo universe? Yeah. Oh, that'd be a good idea. No, no, it isn't. If you're gonna tell a Halo story, tell a Halo story. I was looking at. Um, I liked the uh, Lord of the Rings show that's been coming out, mm-hmm. um, which I think I think definitively we can say it is just fan like fanfic. It's a fan fiction um, that got produced, kind of. Oh, the one with Galadriel. Yeah, okay. I like it. I like it, <laughs> but but it is not canonically Lord of the Lord of the Rings. It's just not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think and I'm okay with both of those things. Both of those things can can exist it's gonna bad welcome in let's bandwagon start go yeah it, <laughs> it, if you're gonna do a retelling or if you're if you're going to say that you're doing a re a retelling do a retelling mm-hmm. right but if you're just gonna say oh well i'm gonna create something in this universe well then fine go ahead and do that yeah i started looking up the author and apparently one of the big reasons, I think we talked about it a little bit when we, when the show came out, um, and I didn't, I didn't really put a lot of it together. Part of the reason that so many people were mad about the series before it even came out was because the author had essentially, essentially written a whole bunch of encyclopedias about, uh, about Lord of the Rings. And at first the Tolkien estate was like, oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. If you collect all these things. That would be a fun thing to produce. And he's like, great. And so he did that. He collected a whole bunch of stuff. And then he added like 20 to 60% oh, new no. content. <laughs> and the Tolkien estate is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't do that. And he's like, nah, it's fine. And they're like, no, don't do that. And he's like, it's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> and, so, and so he basically produced like three encyclopedias like that with smatterings of his own stuff written into them. Oof. Uh. And so the Tolkien estate is like, listen we are fine with you making these encyclopedias, but not if you're going to add your own stuff. That's not the intent for these. So we don't want you to publish these under our, under our stuff. And he's like, that's fine. I'll publish them somewhere else. And then he stepped, kept trying to go to uh, Tolkien conventions until they like basically banned him from going. <laughs> but because he had all of this content and all of these stories written, Amazon was like, well, we want to make a new Lord of the Rings thing. Let's just take his fan art, which is technically not canonical and the 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 community kind of doesn't like because it has false information in it yeah and it's really hard to tell because he did a good job of like emulating uh tolkien stuff like it it's it's not bad it's not bad fan fiction but it is fan fiction and so people were upset about that and i i totally understand that but at the same time i'll read a fan fiction it's pretty good. It's a good pretty good fan fiction. Yeah, I just want to keep good. it separate. So, so long as you yeah. know that it's a fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. So long as it's very explicitly stated that this is fan fiction. Yep. I agree. The 4E <laughs> of Arkham Horror is a fine game. I wish it was edited edition one of its own game. Hmm. Interesting. I'm ready to roll again. Go for it. 18. You like it? Heresy. Seriously, though. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, don't know. I enjoyed it. I like Gladriel, so I, I like having more stuff better. You said 18? 18, correct, yeah. Parrot Folk Pirate Bard with an accordion. Parrot Folk Pirate? Parrot Folk Pirate. Okay. It did not say Aarakocra, so do with that what you will. Well, it's going to be basically the same thing. Sure. I mean, you could just draw a parrot. Embrace. Yeah. Embrace. Pass from Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I would 100% just draw a parrot sitting on an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think my Burt Reynolds. Wait, who's Burt Reynolds? Is that the million dollar man? You're Tom Selleck. My Tom Selleck elf. Yeah, but who's Burt Reynolds? Other mustache. Got it. Mm. Smokey and the Bandit is Burt Reynolds. Mm -hmm. The other mustached man. <laughs> it's a radical departure in gameplay. Interesting. Interesting. Duke boys are at it again. <laughs> I'm going to touch that dog. No. Sorry. I don't know if you guys have seen that meme or not. It's hilarious. Giant bear walking up to somebody's porch and the little girl's just like, can I pet that dog? And they're like, no. I want to pet that dog. It's like, do not. Do not pet the dog. Can I pet that dog? No. And the bear's just like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't care. Whatever. All right. I'll just roll again. 17. A male drow noble, witch knight wearing a face veil, wielding a soul-infused slingshot. Can we talk about slingshots for a little bit? Sure. In real life, I love slingshots. Slingshots are fun. Uh, as, like, a weapon in anything, I just hate it. <laughs> I just hate it so much. Same. They're great for killing small birds. I mean, there's a sling, right? Like, the slings are yep. scary, but, like, the slingshot itself is is weird. It's a weird thing. Like It's super weird. And, it, it, like, it only exists because of rubber. I think there's some old slingshots. I'm trying to remember what they used. Cup it, that dog. I think I think my like largest, like the most egregious thing. Speaking on kind of the same note of like people fucking with stuff is Ezra Bridger's slingshot lightsaber gun <laughs> from <laughs> from Star Wars. Uh, what the hell is it? Rebels, Star Wars Rebels. God, I hate it. It's just the stupidest shit. It's like. 100% just like what kind of thing can we sell <laughs> like, yeah and yeah. then they put that in the show and it's like no don't oh my god we need to sell these nerf slingshots that nobody's buying make it a lightsaber it sounded a little bit like uh, Simmons there for a second give me a picture of spider-man Nope, that sounded like Cape Johnson. Did he do Cape Johnson's voice? I don't think he did. No. J.K. Simmons. Oh, the guy you're serious. Cape Johnson is the uh, the guy who did the uh, farmers insurance commercials. We are farmers. Bum 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 bum. Uh, yeah, but it's it's like the. Uh, Oh, never mind. I think my, I my brain's about. shutting down. I'm just going. To, I was like, I was going to look up who was the guy from the farmers. I should just type in Cave Johnson. Yeah, Cave Johnson yeah. voice. <laughs> oh, it is J.K. Simmons. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Yep. He was also the guy from the Farmers Insurance commercials. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. I think we've just reinforced the Druids, maybe not great at distinguishing voice actors. <laughs> nope. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Nope. Absolutely we have. Yeah. 
Is a witch knight something that I should know? Intensive Care Bear. Yeah. Those pills we gave you earlier can liquefy the frontal lobe of your brain. Just try not to think about it. Seriously, thinking about it is what causes the reaction to, <laughs> to start. I mean, really, think about it. Gummy berry juice. Mm. Get out here. Turn, turn them into a jelly. Mm. The saber gun idea is cool. I mean, I'm okay if it was a saber gun, but that's not what it was. It was a saber slingshot. It was like, eventually a saber, a saber gun. Did he turn it into a gun? Yeah. Okay. Eventually. I don't remember that part. I'm honestly, I'm. I just, I hate that whole side of Star Wars. I love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong, but like the. Uh, I'm going to call it, like, primitivization of plasma weapons just drives me up the wall. Mm. Like, I can I can get behind, um, the Gungans having, like, orbs that when they break cause electric, electrical discharge, right? Like, some kind of electronic fluid that just shorts out the robots. I'm fine with sure. that. I'm fine with that. But, uh, but there's something about, like, I have a device that can make a small pellet of plasma that I will then shoot with a slingshot. It's like, what? <laughs> like, I don't... Laser <laughs> so, so, yeah, there's just something something that just hurts my brain about that. Like, Chewie's bowcaster is similar, yeah. I think, in nature, but it's still, it's still shooting a projectile. Like, it's not shooting... Or is it shooting lasers? It is shooting lasers. Why does it have it, the crossbow it's arms? Shooting lasers. Um, mm, I, I, don't I, get it. I think it is specifically canonical that because Wookiees come from a like a um, it's it's um it's a cultural heritage thing. Sure. It's entirely aesthetic. It's, that okay, and that I'm totally fine with. I'm totally fine with aesthetics, but like. Yeah, the slingshot thing just hurts my brain. Which knight isn't a thing from what I know, just kind of wanted to put armor on a caster. Okay, that's fine. That's kind of what I was thinking. So I was going to go like uh, like the Witch King. The Witch King of Angmar. Which, in the book, I think is way cooler than what they did in the movie. Because in the book, he's just, he's just empty shadow. Empty shadow and creepy armor. Yeah, but that would be really have been really hard to pull off. Yeah, you're not the first person I've heard say that. I was like, yeah, that's fair. Congratulations, you're being rescued. I like that movie. That was a good one. Condor calls for aid. Something like that. Where are we, where are we going? One thirty. We're doing all right. 
starting to run out of steam, but it's because we started a little bit early. Yeah. I'm also quite tired. That uh, tiger wrestler kind of took it out of me. I should probably go run another mile. Got to catch up. I have I have four years of of inactivity to correct. And I have a limited amount of time. Need to get you one of those um, treadmills to put under your desk. Right. I was talking yesterday about to someone about a, like a walking desk or a standing desk. It's like I, I mean I built my own desk, so like I could augment it to just like jack it up or something. But build a floor platform and some hydraulic jacks and just like. <laughs> <laughs> It's supposed to be a plasma-covered railgun or something. I forget exactly what, but if I remember correctly, it's mixed solid and energy weapons. Interesting. Interesting. Drag, hello. Hey, I'm not going to be able to chat for a while. Okay. No problem. Spider Silk Company owner run due to identity theft, hence the veil. Oh, he's on the run. Got it. Man, parrots are so fucking weird. Yeah, they are. Mm. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Don't buy a bird. It's the only thing I, I ever learned from uh, <laughs> Jaden Animations. Was it Jaden Animations? It made so much noise. Jane. Their entire existence is throw water everywhere, throw food everywhere, <laughs> throw shit everywhere, and scream nonstop. Yeah. Is that one dancing? I love it when they dance. <clears throat> when they do the little I want some fuck shake. Like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so funny. <sighs> Corbys are nice. The main downside of the birds is the mess. I had a parakeet for a while when I was younger. I've taken care of uh, cockatiels. Cockatiels are okay. But yeah, they're a lot of work. I've been doing a lot of like drapery sleeves. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll give them like drapery arms and then like metal gauntlet. Metal gauntlet sounds pretty cool. Something like that. And then we just go choo 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 pen has become too thick. 
Let's refocus. That looks good. Okay, I think I gotta call this one. Try to get one more in here. So I'm working on a leather bandolier because that's what I decided my project was gonna be like my personal project for a little while. I don't know if people want me to share that. Like, do people want to see leather working? Do they care? I mean, there's lots of people that watch Adam Savage do leather working. That's true. Yeah, but that's fucking Adam Savage, right? Like, he already has an audience. Do people in my audience specifically want to see that kind of stuff? Or is yeah, it like, well, nobody that's cares? That's, that's the question. It's something different. Yeah. It's, I think yeah. creativity comes in all different shapes and styles, right? But that's me. I don't know about the letter audience. I do love me some gun stuff, so that's the other side of it. That's like I made a bandolier. <laughs> it's just like two people want to see shotgun shells on on the internet. I uh I'm sorry about my uh my vitriolic yeah, but that's Adam Savage. No, no shade I, I, no shade to I you, understand. Rook. You also have an audience, it's just yours oh, is no. <laughs> Mine is very small comparatively. <laughs> yeah. Let me rewrite that. Solid metal projections would melt when blocked with lightsaber, throwing molten metal back at the user. They aren't normally guns more common in Star Wars. Why aren't there more Well, lightsabers aren't um aren't common in Star Wars. That's the biggest reason. Um, metal, while plentiful, is uh, not as plentiful as energy. Yeah. In Star Wars, so and that's why like all of the uh, a lot of a lot of the industry in Star Wars is um, like recycling. It's a lot of of breaking down and salvage, right? Um, like drones or droids droids are kind of dime a dozen because there's just a ton of them and they can be produced um and they're easily like energy isn't really an issue so if you're mass producing a fleet of cheap soldiers which is what the stormtroopers are before they were clone troopers the stormtroopers themselves are cheap soldiers uh trained from planets that they kind of conquer you know giving them a gun that never has to really be reloaded. And there, there's this, like, some of the games had reloading systems for, like, the battery packs and stuff and, like, the heat charging sinks and stuff. But for the most part, not don't have to reload it versus carrying around, transporting, and manufacturing bullets. So if our military could use laser guns, they would. Um, they have a far easier time making a sound gun than a laser gun. Uh, interesting. Interesting thought. The, the, the stun setting. I don't know how the stun setting works on those. 
It just makes a little ring, which is weird. Woo! You love guns, but you live in Washington. Yikes. Yeah, I grew up in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I went to a, I went to one of the gun stores here because I was I wanted someone to look at one of my revolvers. Um and and I was talking to the guy and I was like, Oh yeah, no, I grew up in Idaho. And he's like, Why did you move here? I'm like, Because money. <laughs> Because money. But yeah, no. Uh, Washington has some very strict gun laws, which I'm not opposed to. Uh, most of them do not affect me at all because I, I, yeah, I'm not super interested in owning lots of or crazy guns. So. Person they just want a panzer. I mean, yeah, you can buy those in some places. <laughs> if energy weapon is the best weapon, heat and light aren't the best. Heat and light aren't the best. What do you mean? I think a good example of, of like, uh, so energy weapons in Star Wars are the baseline, right? Like everybody can basically, if you want a weapon, the cheapest and best way to get one is like a plasma pistol. They just exist everywhere. And then when you have something like the stormtroopers who are essentially dedicated to fighting on ships or um, trained, like they're not trained well. That's the biggest problem with the stormtroopers. They're just like a mass army. They have armor that is designed to slightly deflect laser pistol fire because that's what everybody has. Um, but most of the stormtrooper armors, like they aren't sealed. The helmets are just decoration versus being like decorations and comms versus being like the clone troopers who could go out in space with them for like a short amount of time um you run into things like the ewoks who have sticks and it's just like we don't fucking know how to deal with this <laughs> because because the ease of access changes the 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 field of of which you design for so and i think that was that was kind of the same thing with the halo universe as well um the, the Covenant basically only had old found technology and there was no iteration or, or adaptation of it. They just, they had it, they knew how to use it, and that was it. Um, and then when the, um, when the, they started fighting humanity, they started running into problems because like their energy shields were kind of impervious to all of the physical bullets, but not, not perfectly. And they, they, like humanity had to adapt to it and the covenant couldn't adapt to it because they were just complacent in their technology. And that's, that's kind of the same thing with star Wars. Like there's not a lot of innovation in technology because it's just been around forever. Um, and that's why you see like some of the old, old Republic stuff. You'll see things like lightsabers used to have to have connected battery packs. And then for a while they had like large recharging packs. Um, and they, they do have a, a pretty cool, like, iteration of that. But that's over, like, millennia. Same thing with, like, old droids and different things like that. So I like that kind of look at it. But um, back when the energy swords were... Uh, like, still attached to those large backpacks. They also had things like the Vibra swords. The Vibra swords are from Old Republic, too, which is pretty cool. And that's like that's the jump from bladed weapons to vibra swords, which could vibrate very, very quickly, and then to pure plasma. So like there there was a middle ground at one point in time, but um, yeah. Oh, in terms of destructive force and energy efficiency, yeah, yeah. It's like if you're using an energy weapon, heat is loss of energy, loss of power, and light is loss of energy and loss of power. 
Stormtroopers were supposed to be the elite forces, still not as good as the clones. The Imperial armies were the ones who were the fodder. Emphasis on supposed to be. See, now, I, I've heard that the other way around. Like, the Imperial Stormtroopers... I, I see what you're saying. Okay. It's like, once again, are you counting the actual Stormtroopers versus um, people walking around in Stormtrooper armor? Like, that that would be the thing you'd have to clarify. Because, um, like, the the uniform itself was worn by a lot of people on the Death Star, but I doubt they were all, you know, elite fighters. Because there still were a large group of uh, of troopers. So there might be some there might be some nuance there that I I have don't have the words for. I think I'm done with this. I think I'm done with this bad boy. Because even through, like, um, Darth Vader had a set of clone troopers that he had for a long time. Yeah. That were supposed to be, like, the elite of the elite. But most of the, most of the stormtroopers through, um, like, A New Hope and those, those were just recruited people and they weren't trained well. I really wanted them to talk more about in the new movies. Like they had a they had a huge opportunity to talk about Finn and like how they were training him to be some elite dude. Not that he had to be like super badass. I'm just saying like they could have expanded on that and made it its own thing. Like yeah, how did they go from clone troopers to stormtroopers? Like I want to hear about that. And they talked about it for like five minutes and then just didn't care. And I was like that should have been most of the story. Like that could have been a whole movie. It wasn't. It made me say it. But who cares? Guessing the slingshot did the slingshot didn't make it into the design. Oh, I forgot about the slingshot. I totally we started talking about the mage, like it being a an armored mage. And I gave him a book instead of a slingshot. Um You know, we're just gonna turn this into a slingshot. <laughs> Check out my sweet eye of Sauron slingshot. Curious. How morose would it be for one for a parrot folk to decorate their hat and clothes with the feathers of other parrots? As long as it's not a dead ferret, that sounds fine. <laughs> Trophies from all the fight. <laughs> Spell shot. You don't understand how much I wanted Finn to be the Jedi? Yeah, I don't know. That would have been cool too, but at the same time. I really liked his aspect of, like, I wanted to see more of the, the like, kind of how the Republic was rebuilding, and it just didn't, didn't happen that way. Oh, well. That was another example of, of, like, them remaking something. They wanted to remake they want to remake the first movies for a new generation. And so I think I think there are going to be kids in like five, ten years who grew up with those and they're going to love them. Um, and that's great. Like it's the same thing with like the, the first, second, and third movie. Not A New Hope. Episode one, two, and three. Like when I was a kid and that was coming out, people were like, just I'm going to hate it. It's fucking stupid. And like now there are a whole generation of people that just like love those movies. And it's like, you know, they're pretty good. They're good to meme and whatever, so uh, it is what it is, and the first ones are still my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, one more. We can do one more, and then I think I'm probably gonna have to call it here. We might be able to go to three, but I'm kind of running out of steam. A blonde, young-looking elven woman who's paladin. Who's a paladin that is an absolute sociopath, psychopath, mostly against undead. All right. It sounds yeah, it sounds a lot like uh, the lady from the elf lady we were talking about earlier. Okay, people Which say one? the uh, the falafel lady. Oh, 
free rent? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm a normal person, but I fucking hate demons. It's like, okay. That's a little scary. Um... That wasn't a that wasn't like a critique or anything on the show. I was making an offhanded no, comment. No, I think you probably have not met the particular elf that you're actually thinking about. Okay, well then don't worry about it. I'll get there yep. eventually. You will, and you'll know immediately, and that's fine. I like the monk elf. He seems cool. I like the way they pace that show. It's very oh, slow, yeah, but it's crap. good. Yeah. Slow, but it's good. I actually hate the Star Wars films. The best in the franchise offers comes from the comics, cartoons, and games for me. Yeah, that's cool. I really like uh, I like Clone Wars. I think that was really, really good. Um, Andor is really good, but it felt like the least the least Star Warsy of all the films so far. But it it's like. It's a really cool slice of the side of Star Wars that I'm interested in that we don't get to see a lot of. Which I think we see that a lot more like the games and stuff, because you kind of get to yeah. you kind of get to see like other planets that aren't just Coruscant. Um, at least not like in the movies, you only see like the political upper crust of Coruscant, and it's like, yeah, I want to see more of like how people live. So. Yep, we gotta get a good, good jinx pose. There's nothing more unsettling than somebody just standing a little too tall. Did Cad Bane dirty in the Mandalorian? Yeah, they did. <laughs> to be fair, Cad Bane is always kind of a, kind of a just a, I don't know, what do we call him? He's one of those characters that you, I just like. I hated him. I hated him as a character. I hated it when he was in the story, but like I appreciate that he exists. <laughs> I think overall he makes the the I think he makes the universe better. But he's just got he's got so much plot armor and just stupid shit that I always I always yeah. get frustrated with him. But in the Mandalorian, like that I thought very much was just sloppy. They they treated him like, they treated him sloppy, gross. Uh, <laughs> 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 the the overall aesthetic of him like was so prolific that they they were they did they did a poor job of it. Um, the fan edits I think made it really really cool. Which means, like, it was close. It was really close to being, to being great, and they just kind of dropped the ball. Which happens. I think it's just it's fine. I'm just glad they didn't put the stupid little robot in the Mandalorian. God, I hate that robot. Or did they? Uh, which robot? Cad Bane's little, the one that, the one that, uh, uh, ah, oh, shoot, Green. What the hell's his name? Chopper. It might be Chopper. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the actor, the voice actor. He's in Austin Powers and Robot Chicken. 
Shoot, what's his name? He also did Grievous Dirty in the new Clone Wars series. I don't remember. I don't remember what happened to Grievous in the Clone Wars. Much for the deadly Terminator esque warrior and just commanded with a tragic past. Ah. Grievous was only actually scary slash cool in the miniseries. The Dendy card. Gendy Tartakovsky Nickelodeon shorts. Yeah, the movies didn't really portray the fact that, like, he got his lightsabers by killing Jedi. Like, they just, yeah. they kind of, they gloss over it too fast because uh, they had to rewrite Dooku. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were like, oh, you should totally fear this person. But why? Boy, he has all these lightsabers. Yeah. Okay, but why? Well, cut them off the Jedi, obviously. Okay, I'm still not getting. <laughs> yeah, the the the. Um, oh, yeah. In the Clone Wars anime, it was a lot better. Yeah, know? yeah. And like getting his story, I think is pretty cool. But once again, the movies just fast track past it, and you don't get any of that. So. Makes him less interesting. And some of the novels and stuff, yeah. And that's kind of the same thing with Halo as well. Like, the Halo games are fun. They're really fun. Mechanically, they were kind of instrumental in changing the way that first-person shooters worked. Um, specifically, like, with the way the Xbox controller, like, that was kind of fundamental. But, uh, but like, the books themselves are really good. And if you read the books, they make the games better. Um because you you get to learn a lot of cool stuff that you just you just don't get you just don't get it. so like same thing with the comics like learning the comics that tell you about Grievous's past and stuff it's like oh man yeah fuck the Jedi <laughs> like, yeah so are we the baddies I mean yeah kind of the Jedi we're yeah. not the Jedi yeah. were I, I, that's always the fun thing like when you start talking about um, Star Wars on, on a whole, like, as the movies are written, are kind of lazy. Like, the movies. The movies are kind of lazily written. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, there's a lot of... And it's partially because there's so many people writing the stories in the books and stuff. But, like, the Star Wars universe is really interesting. Um, and, like, the little, little tiny things that you look at, like... Uh, shoot, what's his name? Palpatine. Palpatine's not wrong. Like... The, the Jedi Order basically is dwindling because it's just, it's not relevant to the society as it is, as it was, like, in the Old Republic. And they basically are the leftover remnants of a horrible, horrible galaxy-wide millennia-long war. And they're just yep. the ones that kind of won, kind of won. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's weird. They are. They're religious wizards. Nobody yeah. likes that. <laughs> And uh, and what's left of the Sith, I guess Palpatine specifically, is grabbing power by exploiting them, or by by exploiting the fact that one they're irrelevant and two nobody likes them because they're yeah. they're self righteous but also horrifyingly cruel and outdated system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Palpatine's not wrong. He's just an asshole. Yeah, dude. Yep. Yeah. In he's he's mind, not wrong. He's he's also not right, and he's not right. moral. But he's not wrong. <laughs> he basically wants to do the exact same thing, but yeah, so that he maintains power. And that's kind of the same thing, right? Right. Yes. They're both opposite sides of the same coin, and the yep. same coin is absolutely terrible. Yeah, yeah. That very much does seem to be the point, right? The the Sith and the Jedi are the same. Yep, yeah. That, that's always been the that's always been the thing, and that that's why I really love Ahsoka. I think Ahsoka's yeah. While some of the writing is kind of bad, and some of the acting is kind of bad, <laughs> 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 the overall like plot and idea I really dig. I really, I yeah. really like it. So, 
which is why like rebels even though it's made for like five-year-olds it's like oh man there's so many good little like little nuggets of of cool lore and things in this that i i want to watch it and i still i still yeah. enjoy it yeah and then Edger if Bridger only pulls it was a fucking slingshot and it's just like god damn it I, I don't care about Ezra Bridger's slingshot. I care about the fact that he is a chosen one set in a series uh, that is supposed to specifically, like, subvert the whole chosen one thing. Oh, the, interesting. The whole chosen one trope. I kind of didn't... I didn't see him that way. That's interesting. I have to think about that more. Did, did you not finish the finish the series? I did. All the way through? I, I thought I did. Because, like, he was basically able to use the Force to kind of push. Mm. It, it, it goes back to um, to Ahsoka's kind of jam, I think. Like, she is the one that has to deal with the, the brother and the father. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Ezra's part of that, except that his choices kind of push Ahsoka in that direction. And so it's like, who's really important here, Ezra or Ahsoka? Um, and Ezra could be could be kind of the replacement for Anakin in that situation and maybe Ahsoka's supposed to guide him that way but I don't know I don't know it's, I suppose so it just it feels very chosen one to me because Ezra gets to do stuff that no Jedi could do sure okay okay, okay I can buy that um, such, such as like finding the the uh, lost Jedi temple and entering it despite the fact that Jedi knew it was here and they would not they'd never got any of that information despite the fact that they were trained in the force yeah so that to me and this this is all speculation right like and I think yeah. this is fine this is a fine discussion um, to me that that was always related once again to ahsoka because ahsoka has effectively left the Jedi order and is now kind of a a force follower right sure. um so she's she's kind of singularly aside from aside from the sith and the jedi she's like i'm i'm outside of this i just want to see the force right and so then ezra kind of being trained by a fallen jedi and then having to kind of like follow her mm -hmm. i think he kind of gets that oh maybe the jedi aren't the right way to do it but there's something interesting about the force uh and so I, I always assumed that it wasn't that he was important and that's why he could do it, but it's because he kind of is separating from the Jedi itself. Like, the reason the Jedi couldn't do it is because it's like, nope, the Jedi were wrong, the Sith were wrong, so this temple is just doesn't work because you guys don't, you don't understand the Force. So he's chosen that he kind of understands the Force a little more uh, uh, innately. Yeah, innately. Then than the other than the Jedi and the Sith do in general. So Okay. So I, I I can agree with what you're saying, but I didn't think it was whereas Anakin's like supposed to be this the chosen he, one because yeah. things it's the like the one of prophecy. Mm-hmm. Which he was and he was just like, no fuck off and didn't didn't, didn't do his job and then the world collapsed. <laughs> Cause yeah, yeah the prophecy well, thing wasn't supposed to be a Jedi thing. It was just it was it was a prophecy for the force and he abandoned it. So Yeah. Well, to be fair, the Jedi also were like, uh, uh, no, I don't like this kid. We're not going to, like, yeah. we're going to force all of the responsibility on him, but we're not going to actually give him any guidance or any emotional support. Yeah, and that's what, I, I, think, I think that's kind of where the Jedi are wrong. And it's like, yeah. yeah. But that's, what's the, what's the saying? Like, a man will often find his, um, find his fate while walking the path to avoid it something yeah. like that yeah something so like i think that. i think the jedi kind of fell into their own prophecy that way they're like no he, he's too angry so we're not going to allow him to be the prophecy one it's like uh nice job <laughs> yeah <laughs> you done fucked up yeah what is your favorite yeah. rancor uh i don't i don't remember like i think there's three of them that i can recall and i don't know any of their names one was a Jedi, one was not a Jedi, and one was a uh, like a, the one that Luke fought. <laughs> <laughs> I found that the Jedi's biggest problem is the sense of detachment. Yeah, I mean they're two sides yeah. of a coin. The 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 Sith are essentially like 
feed into your emotions so much so that it blinds you to the force and then the, the Jedi are remove your your emotions so much so that it blinds you from the force like <laughs> they are there are two sides of the same coin yep. and then there have been a handful of gray Jedi that I think really kind of progress the the story which is where Ahsoka kind of picks up yeah everything in balance I... I, I I really agree with you in that I find I find Ahsoka's story far more compelling specifically because she's not a Jedi but is still a Force user and playing with the Force. Mm-hmm. And I think I've said it before, like the the non Jedi non Sith Force users that still exist within the universe are just so much cooler. Yeah, the Night Sisters of Daphomir are like that. That's that feels so much more to me like what uh what the dark side of the force, like a, a truly evil organization of force users should mm-hmm. feel like should feel more like that yeah and i think like i think the, the jathomir sister is like a big thing for them i think the reason they kind of align themselves more with the sith users is because they have this they have this aspect of the force that is less the force is telling us to do something it's like we are going to command the force like yeah. we can yeah. we're gonna and it's just like mm, that seems wrong <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the force if you if you really want to look at some stuff look at the father the i think the sister the, and the brother yeah, yeah which that's the light side the dark side and then the kind of ubiquitous the force creation hole. yeah the sister died right yes. like and so the the daughters of dathomir basically follow this guy like they are an offshoot of of I can use the force and be powerful. And that's also where the Sith come from. So you have two different aspects yeah. that kind of work together. Whereas this guy is just like, got to keep things in balance and do cool shit. And the the Jedi, the Jedi are on this bend of, uh, of like, follow the force and don't think, just follow the force, which <laughs> I think is kind of this guy. Um, and then also like, we should make the world a better place because the force is beautiful and creates life. And so it's like like these two things kind of get overshadowed here and you lose you lose the like there's not a lot of Jedi that that really like want to continue and flourish the universe. They just want to kind of watch it and not do anything with it. And it's like that's it's yeah. kind of making you fall apart. Yeah. So the uh, well, like one of my favorite stories before you just totally delete your diagram. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, one of my favorite stories is um of um uh what's his what's his name the guy in episode one that that darth maul kills uh qui-gon jinn qui-gon jinn also a great Um, jedi really cool yeah yeah but like uh qui-gon jinn i guess in one of the comics has an experience where he goes to a dark side planet and he actually sees where the the this the force creates life Mm -hmm. uh and makes everything better um and where the dark side of the force where those two things uh intersect so he sees he sees the like he gets to see this point in the middle where where this is it's a violent uh the maelstrom dark side yeah dark side maelstrom planet uh but like but there is life there and it is mm-hmm. beautiful and it is balanced um and and like the dark side can create as well and uh, like he finds this balance point and uh that's kind of why it's so kind of tragic that that oh yeah he that he dies because he could have been able to to get Anakin to where he was supposed to be uh but uh but the Sith killed him and uh the rest of the Jedi um decided that they weren't going to you know they weren't going to play they weren't going to they weren't going to listen to the voice it's it's like the same story keeps happening over yeah. and over again amazing <laughs> right <laughs> like, amazing yeah no yeah and and I, so i really do like i like the gray jedi because it very much is outside of the circle looking at like what the force is in general without predisposition yeah and that's yeah. why i like Ahsoka. And, and, also, uh, I I also do think that that, that the fact that it is the, the same story being told in different iterations endlessly mm. is also good 
storytelling yeah. in terms of what like of what the force is supposed to be yep like and i, I think what was it um final fantasy 14 has a really kind of weird perspective on a few things one of them being time which i really enjoy I don't really want to spoil too much, but no one... I, I don't think I, it matters. Um, yeah, probably not. Hold on, let me catch up on chat, and then I'll talk about this. Uh, yeah, the sad yeah. thing about the different side of the same coin is you can't see the other side. Yeah, that's a good, good quote. Uh, the biggest reason the prequel Jedi Order fell was because they were more concerned with the Republic than the Force, and it became a tool of it. Yep, yep. They they just, like I said, they were they won the war, and they were in charge of things, and, and people started being like, we don't need you. Um, I love the what-ifs from Star Wars. A Dragon Ball, especially because minor nudges happen in those stories, and there's a massive effect of that day. You can imagine Qui Gon raised Anakin. Yeah, those are fun. Those yeah. are fun, uh, and that's why fan art. Fan art, cool. Not fan art, but like fan fiction. I think it's yeah. great. I love those things. Um, but no, with, with Final Fantasy, like the main character has something called the uh, the Echo, and it basically it's basically their excuse for giving you exposition like into the past. So, like, you can see, you go into a cutscene and, like, you see what happened here millennia ago, right? So, so that's right. their explanation for it. And what they eventually tell you the Echo is, is, like, certain things in time and space hit so hard that it ripples out. And so your character can see those ripples. Like, you see the things that happen. And that's also how they explain, like, uh, you see bosses, like, the boss is going to punch right here. <laughs> And so it's like, Big Red Square! Get out of Big Red Square! They say that's the same thing. Like, you can foresee that this attack is coming. Uh, <laughs> and so that's silly. But um, I like that concept, and I feel like that's kind of how the Star Wars universe works, too. Like, they're like, oh, yeah. there is this prophecy we have. And really what that prophecy is, is the cycle repeating. Like, you've seen this thing happen over and over again, and it's like, it always happens the same way. We see the sister get killed. We see the like the, the greed of the dark side of the force kind of causing the schism and then the universe has to re rebalance itself and that just happens it's a cycle and so it's like yeah i like that i like that concept because then it's not so much like fate bound um because things can change but it's like there is an order in which things happen and each time it happens it happens a little differently and so that's mm -hmm. a really that's a really fun way to like have storytelling um, yeah, yeah and they do that a Pattern. lot Matter oh, yeah. not prophecy. Exactly, yeah. And it's the same thing like we were just talking about the the journey's end. It's essentially like Demon King rises up, heroes show up to stop it, it either does or it doesn't, and then it continues. And then two hundred years later the same thing starts happening again, but a little differently. Um and the cool thing about that story is that basically that character the one character just kind of keeps progressing through time. And I like that. Um because yeah. even in their story, where the main characters or the four main characters like defeat the Demon King, there is, they've also talked about um, they've talked about like there being heroes that happened like a thousand years before that, and people don't even remember who those heroes were. Like they don't remember their names, but they stopped some great evil that no one remembers. And it's like, yeah, this isn't the first time the heroes have had to rise up and save everybody. And it won't be the last. And so, like, that's a cool cool way to tell the story. And I really appreciate it for that. Yeah, yeah. So, I think I'm done. I think I am spent. I'm going to go walk around yep, the block same. again. Probably eat some more pizza. Try to work on the video. I doubt I'll get it done today, but I might. Who knows? Might have a video tomorrow. That would be pretty cool. So, um, let's see if there's anybody to raid. Who is around today? There isn't usually, but sometimes there is. Nope. Bummer. How to RPG is coming up on the Guardians of Spirits of Winter. That's cool. But nothing right now, so we're going to call it there. Um, yeah. Hopefully we'll be back on Friday. Um, if not, I'll give you guys a heads up in the Discord. If you're not a member of the Discord, check that out. Uh, if we do stream on Friday, I still have the list of everything we have there, so... Wisdom of the day. I think we went through a whole bunch of wisdoms of the day earlier. <laughs> yeah. So I would rewind to the first part where we were talking about different art aspects. Um, let me see if I can think about reiterating any of that. Learn your landmarks. Learn your la yeah. body landmarks. 
don't don't let the perfection that you think you imagine get in the way of the good that is the drawing you will make. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Um, other than that, that's all I got. So stay happy, stay healthy, keep your dice on the table. We'll catch everybody a little bit later. Bye, everyone. Bye.